Elway got the call as Denver played at Baltimore. Elway might have been the property of the Colts had it not been for a big trade. On that day, Elway had a tough time. He's sacked here by Leo Wisniewski. Last Sunday at Mile High Stadium, it was a different time for John Elway. Starting again, he threw two touchdown passes to lead his club to victory. This one to Clint Sampson. The Baltimore Colts have number 33, Curtis Dickey, week to week one of the outstanding rushers in the National Football League. Today, it's the Baltimore Colts visiting the Denver Broncos. Today's game is brought to you by Chrysler Plymouth. Quality products from the new Chrysler technology. By Sears, where you'll find great values. There's more for your life at Sears. And by Sylvania Superset Color TV and the complete line of Sylvania home entertainment products. And good afternoon on a glorious day here in Denver. The temperature around 50 degrees. Marvelous weather to play football. Jay Randolph along with Bob Chandler. Bob, this is a big game as we take a look at the people who are in contention, of course. The AFC's best records, Denver 8-6. and six. They're very much in the playoff picture. The Baltimore Colts have been a team that hasn't given up. They're much improved. They are 6-8 and eight on the year. And, of course, the emergence of Denver and John Elway. Jay, it is really exciting to see a young quarterback like John Elway take that step forward to becoming a, a bona fide quarterback. Here we're going to see him throwing to his two favorite targets, rookie Clint Sampson, who has also come on strong in these last few weeks, and his other all-pro and the most reliable receiver on the team, Steve Watson. Elway last week did a little bit of everything. He scrambled, he threw long, he threw short, and he played with the kind of confidence a quarterback in the National Football League needs. There is John Elway. He's warming up. A look at the playing field here in excellent condition. The prescription turf. The Broncos lead this series four games to one. The Colts have never won here. Carlos set to kick off to begin play. Larry Anderson and Kendall Williams are back to receive. Denver and Baltimore. Here we go. Kendall Williams. And he's going to come out. Gets to the 10, finds a little opening, but is down at the 12-yard line. Kendall Williams made the decision to come out of the end zone. Wilbur Myers, number 29 for the Broncos, in on the tackle. And the Colts don't start with very good field position. The ball is spotted at the 14-yard line. Pagel, Dickey, and McMillan. The offensive backfield, the receivers, Porter, Otis, and Sherwin. Hitting Donaldson right and harder starting up front. Baldeschweiler is out with a neck injury. First down for the Colts. The handoff going to Dickey. And Dickey gets a couple. Dickey starts the day with 920 yards and a 4.3 average. The tackle made by Tom Jackson, number 57. The defensive unit. Chavis, Carter, and Jones. The defensive line, Ryan, Busick, Gratishar, and Jackson. Good linebacking crew. Lewis Wright, Mike Harden, Dennis Smith, and Steve Foley in the secondary. Second down and eight. And the pitch back. That's Dickey across the 20-yard line. Dickey, who played at Texas A&M, of course, has been a key factor in controlling the football. Barney Chavis, 79, and Steve Busick, 58, make the tackle. Again, out to the 22-yard line, where it's going to be third down and three. Sellout crowd, the 101st consecutive sellout at Mile High Stadium in Denver. Beach is in there at the tight end position, number 81. That's Porter coming in motion. And on the run, Dickey, he's got the first down and more. Dickey moving it out to the 28-yard line. So a first down for the Baltimore Colts. The Colts with that 6-8 and eight record. Last Sunday lost a tough one, 10-6 to, to the Jets at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. 
Yeah, we're taking a look at, uh, at Curtis Dickey here, Jay. The, Curtis Dickey and McMillan are such fine backs. They run the ball so well, but what they do so well for each other is they block for each other. On Dickey's last run there, McMillan threw the, the block that sprung him, and they'll, we'll see that from them throughout the afternoon. Pagel gives it back again to Dickey. And Dickey slashes out to the 35-yard line. They're working on that right side, Bob. The tackle was made by Chavis number 79 and Gratishar 53. Pagel, the young man who played, of course, for Frank Cush at Arizona State. And he's a gutty young man. These last couple of games, as Baltimore fans know, will decide whether he is going to be their number one man when they start next year. There is Frank Cush, 54 years old, a native of Wimber, Pennsylvania. One of 15 children. A real battler, second down and three. Pagel handing off to McMillan, who gets the call for the first time. McMillan has a first down just over the 40-yard line. Barney Chavis, number 79, made the tackle. So the Colts moving the ball along the ground here. Well, you know, I'd really like to see them open it up today. They, they love to stick with that ground game. That is their strength, McMillan and Dickey. But they know that if they get behind, they have to be able to throw the ball. What they would like to do is get out in front on Denver and still control the ball and keep their defense off the field. And Pagel's first pass of the day. If he gets to throw it, he's on the run. And he is out over the 45 to the 47-yard line. Pagel with 382 rushing yards coming into today, a 9.1 average, a Colt record. A scrambling quarterback like Pagel presents a problem to a defense. They really, if they're going to sack a quarterback like Pagel, who is looking for the run if he gets pressure, what, he, what they'll have to do is get him on the second time around, Jay. Houston surprisingly leading Cleveland in the fourth quarter. San Francisco beating up on Buffalo, fourth quarter score. A final, Chicago over Minnesota. Alvin Moore is in the backfield now with McMillan, and it's second down and three. And that is Alvin Moore stopped short of a first down. No gain on the play. Steve Busick, the third-year man from USC, number 58, left inside linebacker, made the tackle. What's going to bring up third down and three? Cincinnati 17 to 9 in the fourth quarter over Detroit. Seattle leads the New York Giants in the fourth quarter. New Orleans defeated Philadelphia 20 to 17 in overtime. Dickey has carried the ball five times for 22 yards. And it is McMillan and Moore in the backfield right now. No, Dickey is back in. Or check that. This is McMillan, and he doesn't get it. They had Alvin Moore and McMillan in the backfield. Jim Ryan made a fine play. The left outside linebacker, number 50. Well, if they're going to try and pick up those three yards going outside, one thing that they can't allow is the kind of penetration that Jim Ryan got there. We may see Baltimore go to that right side, to their right side, often today. It isn't because Jim Ryan and Steve Busick are weak over there. It's because Randy Gratishar and Tom Jackson are so strong on the other side. The top punter in the National Football League, Ron Stark, ready to punt to Zach Thomas. Stark averaging 45.5. to the far sideline and going out of bounds near the 15-yard line. That's where they'll mark it at the 15, and Denver will take over there. Well, the Broncos will have the football when we come back. 9.48 left to go in the first period. No score here at Mile High Stadium in Denver. Demand quality and durability. Plymouth builds it in. The 550 Plymouth Turismo 2.2. 0 to 50 in under 5.9 seconds. 1984 Turismo 2.2. Match it for price, Camaro. The 550 Plymouth Turismo 2.2. Back with a 5-year or 50,000-mile protection plan. Match it if you can. The new Chrysler technology. The best-built, best-backed American cars. After a night below freezing... After three hours with the lights on, 
after all these years, people still have more confidence in Sears Die Hard than any other battery you can buy all over America. At Sears Tire and Auto Centers, when we install a Die Hard, we install confidence. There's more for your life at Sears. This telecast presented by authority of the NFL. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Denver Broncos and the NFL is prohibited. There's a final. Houston defeats Cleveland 34-27. First down for John Elway and the Denver Broncos starting from the 15-yard line. Winder and Poole in the backfield coming in motion. That's Poole and the handoff to Winder. Winder gets a couple. Trying the left side. Winder starts the day 11th in the AFC with 717 yards and a four-point rushing average. Vernon Maxwell, the right outside linebacker on the tackle. Elway, Winder, and Poole, the offensive backfield group. Sampson, Watson, and Egloff are the receivers. Bryan with Bishop and Howard. Lanier and Stuttered on the front line for the Broncos. Second down and seven from the 18-yard line. Elway going to the air for the first time, and it is incomplete. Looked like he was trying to set up a little screen on the left side. And doing an excellent job was Barry Krause along with Steve Parker. They stayed at home. He threw it out there to Nathan Poole, but Poole was very fortunate just to be able to hold on and kind of get it away from him without somebody taking it away. Thompson, Wisniewski, and Parker, the defensive line. Bracelin, Odom, Krause, and Maxwell are the linebackers. And Burroughs and Randall. Anderson and Nesby Glasgow in the secondary. It'll be third down. Gerald Wilhite and Jeff Miles are in the backfield now, and Elway operates out of the shotgun. Elway, a lot of time. Throws, and he overthrows his intended receiver, number 84, Sampson, up at the 32-yard line. Tate Randall had the coverage. A tough throw on the run for Elway, and he let it soar. Well, there's some good things and bad things about that, Jay. Elway is, knows where his pressure is coming from. He steps up. He gets away from his pressure. The good thing about it is, as he starts to scramble, as we see here, he's still looking to throw the ball, and that's important. He didn't quite get it down where he wanted to, but the most important thing when you have a quarterback who has the ability to run is that he still looks to throw the ball while he's scrambling. Running time for Luke Prestridge, the five-year man from Baylor, averaging 42.5. That's Larry Anderson back to receive. And this is a boomer. Anderson backing up at the 27, at the 35. And down he goes. Leading the way, number 21, Myron Dupree, the cornerback. He really got down there quickly. It was a 54-yard punt. 4.2 hang time. We've got 8.45 to play. A scoreless first period here in Denver. Our son goes to camp. Fascinating. And you take over his computer. Incredible. Now, command the powers of Adam, the power of a complete computer system, all in one package. How about writing the kid a letter? A letter? We we'll use Adam. A computer? Adam, an electronic typewriter with built-in word processing program. So simple you can start using him right away. Adam's asking me a question. So answer it. And write. Oh, we computed it. Mm -hmm. Command the powers of Adam and program your future. Seguin, Texas, and Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. Seguin means barbecue at its biggest and best. And Milwaukee means beer. Cold, crisp, old Milwaukee beer. And smooth, golden, old Milwaukee light. And old Milwaukee. And old Milwaukee light. Tastes as great as their name. You know, it doesn't get any better than this. Monday, a family reunion turns to tragedy for Albert. Can a miracle save him? Michael Landon stars in an all-new two-hour Little House movie, Monday. There's Dan Reeves, the 39-year-old native of Rome, Georgia, in his third year as head coach here. Pat Beach, number 81, playing tight end for Tim Sherwin, who has a neck problem. That was Beach, who came in motion to the right side. 
Curtis Dickey, and he doesn't get a thing. Maybe a loss of about a half a yard as Randy Gratishar made the play. Uh, Gratishar, number 53, playing his last regular season game here at Mile High Stadium in Denver today. What a great gentleman. Six times he's been in the Pro Bowl. Ten-year veteran from Ohio State. Very special man. I think, Jay, the only guys that will be really glad to see Randy retire are the ones that are still active in the <laughs> National Football League. Pagel swings it out. Dickey cuts it up over the 40. And still going at the 45, the 50. Penalty marker is down. Dickey's at the 30, the 20, the 10, 5. Touchdown, but there is a penalty marker back at the 43-yard line. Brilliant run by Dickey, but they may bring it back. They're going to. The referee today is Fred Silva. The umpire, Tom Hensley. Headlinesman is Norm Cragseth. Bob Beeks is the line judge. Pete Lisk, a former Denver Bronco, the back judge. Dave Perry and Don Orr complete this 81, officiating team. 81, illegal block above the waist. Now we watch Baltimore, again. 75, Denver, personal foul, roughing the passer, offset, replay, second down. Well, we've got offsetting penalties, and it nullifies a brilliant run. Well, this is probably one of the finest open field runs you'll see all year, and what amazed me about that, Jay, is something I had mentioned a little earlier. Throughout that run, McMillan was blocking for Dickey the whole way. It's rare to see that, although it's supposed to happen. Another great runner like McMillan, they usually like to conserve their strength. They like to get ready to carry the ball themselves. But he's a very unselfish player, and he's been leading the way for Dickey on almost all his runs so far this afternoon. It's the too bad that had to come back. The infractions were against Beach and Latimer. Latimer now at the nose for the Broncos, number 72. Alvin Moore's in the backfield, number 23, for Baltimore. Randy McMillan, penalty marker goes down. McMillan gets over the 35. At the 37-yard line, Rulon Jones, big number 75, made the play. Initial call holding against the Colts. Well, the Colts' offensive line was rebuilt at the beginning of the year. They became very solid. Jim Mills and Hart and Donaldson, Hinton, Baldishweiler. Here, we'll listen to the call right here. That's on Ray Donaldson, and probably one of the real quality quality offensive centers in the game. They've had injuries to that offensive line. They've had to make some changes again this afternoon. So it's going to be a, you have to rely, when you run the ball so much, you rely on that offensive line, and it's a tough thing for Baltimore having to make the changes they've had to make there. Extra wide receiver in the game. Otis, Porter, and Henry are all in there. And Pagel throws just over the outstretched fingertips of Porter, number 87. Washington and Dallas in that big one down in Big D, and the Redskins score first. John Riggins, a three-yard run. 10-43 of the first period. Washington leads Dallas 7-0. Here it's scoreless in the first period. 7.46 to play. Last week versus the Jets, Pagel. Two interceptions hurt, but Baltimore had many opportunities to win that game. Denver's in the prevent defense, and Pagel rolls. Throws on the run, and it is complete. Down at the 40-yard line to Porter. And Porter is all the way to the 31-yard line. First down for Baltimore, but there's another penalty flag. And it's back downfield at the 23-yard line. Jay, you know what I think happened was when Pagel rolled out, he was across the line of scrimmage before he threw the ball. It was close, and I think that may be the call. They're showing that area right there. Looked like he might have been a yard over the line. Well, that's exactly what happened to him last week against the New York Jets when they had the big play toward the end of the game. Pagel started the day with 10 touchdowns, 15 interceptions. 145 completions out of 288 Illegal attempts. Illegal forward pass. Number 18, through the ball, beyond the line of scrimmage, lost it down, fourth down. That's what happens, Jay, when you're so fast, you get out there sooner than you think you're supposed to. <laughs> so Stark will come on to punt for the second time. And Zach Thomas is downfield. There is Pagel. Stark 
played at Florida State now in his second season. A low squib kick coming up quickly Thomas he's at the 50 and he was met by number 29 of the Colts Mark defenses and it's a good thing he was or he might have gotten a lot more only a 37 yard punt. Denver's going to have very good field position. We have seven minutes 25 seconds left to play first period. No score here in the demand quality and durability. Plymouth builds it in. The 550 Plymouth Horizon. Front wheel drive Horizon. Match it for mileage, Cavalier. 1984 Plymouth Horizon. Match it for price, Escordell. The 550 Plymouth Horizon. Backed with a five-year or 50,000 mile protection plan. Match it if you can. The new Chrysler technology. The best built, best backed American cars. This is the moment it's time Exercise. to start. Right. Start slowly at first, but start. You know you've got to find your way. That new tomorrow starts today. This is the best of life. I've uh, decided to start. You can do it, and we'd like to help. Lisa. Hey, gang, it's a night game. Memphis State Tigers are going out to Baltimore Pavilion to take on UCLA. Two All-Americans, Keith Lee against Kenny Fields. Inside the fields. Next Saturday night on NBC Sports. Frank Cush, a man who was an All-American defensive guard at 175 pounds. He was a tremendous player at Michigan State, 22 years at Arizona State. From the 49-yard line of the Colts, Denver first down. Elway rolling, looking, throwing, and complete. Fine catch by John Sawyer. And then he lost the football, and we will wait and see. Colts are going to get it. Well, he made a fine play, but then coughed it up. It was a tough catch, and he never apparently really could get himself squared away. Barry Krause, number 55, was the man who picked off the fumble. Well, the ball will be at the 34-yard line, first turnover of the game. We're going to see John Elway rolling out here. You know, the thing from here, it looks like John's putting a little too much steam on the ball. It made it a tough catch for Sawyer there. He's got to learn as he rolls out and a, and a receiver is running towards him or running with him to take a little bit of heat off the ball and give him a little better chance to hang on to it. Pagel is throwing, and it's almost intercepted. Dennis Smith, the strong safety, cut in front of Pat Beach and almost picked it off. There's Smith out of USC. Four interceptions already this year, and they like to bring him on the safety blitz. He has five sacks. And you know what we're going to see from him today a little bit is he's going to be playing up on the tight end in tight coverage, which you don't see a strong safety do a lot. He says his knee's bad. It's been hurting him a little bit. It's easier for him to do that up in tight coverage, but also from there they can bring him on the blitz much easier. Alvin Moore, 23. Randy McMillan, 32 in the backfield. Second down and 10. Porter going in motion, and they pitch it off to Moore. He goes the other way, and they string it out. And they don't get much, a yard or two at most. Rulon Jones, number 75, right there. And Randy Gratishar, also number 53, in to help out. Jones is quite a performer out of Utah State. He's been playing very well, a number two draft choice. We're taking a look at what Denver has done so well for so long, and they have such an active defense. The contained man was hardened there, number 31. He forces the play inside where Rulon Jones and Gratishar finish him off. Third down and nine. Denver in a prevent defense and Pagel rolling to the near sideline, throwing back against the grain. It is complete and it looks like a first down to number 87, Tracy Porter. It's going to be close. Mike Harden, the cornerback, made the tackle. Porter making his 25th catch of the season. It is a first down. Ball just over the 45-yard line. No score here at Mile High Stadium. Yeah. 
Bagel's been rolling out a lot. What it does is it buys him a little extra time. We'll see him set up here as a kind of a half roll, reads the defense well, and hits Porter right in the middle zone. Again, it's Porter coming in motion to the near side. They pitch it back to Moore. Moore gets a couple over the 50 and down to the 48-yard line. He did most of that on his own. Got a pretty good block out in front. Number 68, Jeff Hart. Pickup of about five. Moore with a 3.6 average coming into today's game. And the Colts have it in Denver territory at the 48-yard line with 5.16 left to go in the first quarter. No score. Earlier when they played in Baltimore, September the 11th, Denver won 17 to 10. A touchdown run by Steve DeBerg with 29 seconds left. Won that game for Denver. Up the middle, McMillan. McMillan gets to the 46-yard line. Stop made by Gratishar once again. Last Sunday, the Broncos 27 to 6 winners here over Cleveland. It was Elway's finest day, 16 of 24 for 284 yards, two touchdowns. And the Colts, as we mentioned, lost to Tuffy 10 to 6 to the Jets. It was a defensive struggle. Raul Allegre handled the scoring with two field goals. Newton Williams and Alvin Moore in the backfield. The handoff goes to Moore. And Moore has the first down at the 42-yard line. Alvin Moore, who played at Arizona State, a lot of Arizona State young people on this football team of Frank Cush. Cush was there for 22 years. Baltimore's offensive line has really has something to prove today, I think, Jay. They were pretty much manhandled last week by the New York Jets. I feel they're potentially a pretty good unit. Like I said, they've had some injuries, so they would like to have a good game this afternoon. Well, they're a team that has not quit at any time this season. Pagel in trouble, freelancing now. And Pagel on the run, steps out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Barney Chavis was chasing him. Good coverage that time in the secondary for the Denver Broncos. Well, Denver's defensive coordinator, Joe Collier, really figures out a team pretty well before they play him. He's one of the great defensive coordinators in the game. What they tried to do there was hit a little slant pattern. Denver's defensive backs came up, shut it off. Pagel tried to improvise, improvise and find somebody downfield. When he does that, it's important for the receivers to come back toward him no matter where they are to give him a target to throw at. McMillan 32 and Moore 23 in the backfield. Second down and five. Little trouble on the handoff. Moore holds on and goes down to the 25-yard line. An excellent job by Alvin Moore. Moore was met by the strong safety Dennis Smith. Moore had a little trouble on the handoff from Pagel. He finally cradled that ball, made an excellent move here. We're going to see him here. A lot of people wonder why you're not seeing Dickey in there. Well, this is one of the reasons Moore can do a very adequate job. He's come on strong these last few weeks. He's played much more as the as the season has progressed. First down at the 25 yard line. A handoff to McMillan and on his own, he gets inside the 20. He got by Barney Chavis and was brought down by Busick, number 58, and Steve Foley, number 43. Well, Baltimore has come off. They're, they're fired up. They're coming off the ball. The running backs are breaking tackles. They're doing a lot of things with extra effort on their own. Denver kind of has to regroup, get together a little bit here. They're missing too many tackles, and they're too fine a defense to be able to, to not come up with the big plays when they need them down here. Second down and four. Sherwin is in at tight end now, and the pitch comes back to Dickey. He's in a lot of trouble. Got back to the line of scrimmage. Busick and Foley, 58 and 43, are there to make the tackle. At Dallas, Joe Theismann to Clint Didier. A 40-yard touchdown pass, and still in the first period, it is Washington 14 and Dallas nothing. Baltimore, Baltimore's been much more effective, it appears, so far, running with the quick-hitting plays up the middle. When they try to go to the outside, even with the speed that Dickey has, Denver's strength is the way they pursue. 
and they've been able to stop them when they've gone outside. Third down and four. Penalty markers down. Pagel throws it away, and there are four penalty markers down. Pass was intended down the right side for Tracy Porter. But the penalty will now be discussed and marched off. Our referee is Fred Silva. Well, they're going to offense go. number 75. Ball start. Third down. Ball at the 24 yard line. There's a man who threw some passes in his day, Zeke Bukowski. With Frank Cush. Now it's third and nine. Hagel's rolling. They're running for him. He throws back. It's intercepted. And then dropped. Oh! Dennis Smith had it. Almost came up with his fifth interception of the year. I thought he had. I'll tell you, Porter did a good job. He kept battling him in there and. That was why Smith couldn't hold on. We're going to see him roll out here. One of the toughest things to do is roll out one direction and throw back the other. You lose sight of where the defensive players are. Tracy Porter there had to become a defensive back in that situation and did a good job keeping Dennis Smith from making the interception. The rookie from Texas, Raul Alegre, 91 points on the air. He's tied a club record with 24 field goals. Ties Jim Martin's record set in 63. Ron Stark to hold. High pass from the 32 a 42 yard field goal is good Raul Alegre having a marvelous season has put the Baltimore Colts on top one minute 20 seconds left to go in the first period and the Colts lead the Broncos as you look again at Raul Alegre Ready to go a couple rounds, eh? Yeah. Hey, champ. Hey. How's everything ready to go? Do you good? I hear the same about you. Gotta reach deep inside. I'm the best. It has a hey. taste all its own. You get your chance. Enjoy it. Do you have enough homeowners insurance to keep up with building costs? Do you have enough auto liability to pay for a serious accident today? I'm Doyle Olson, a State Farm agent from St. Charles, Illinois. State Farm agents around the country are offering a free family insurance checkup. We'll show you where you stand on your auto, home, life, and health insurance and leave the decisions to you. If you have any questions on your family insurance, see a State Farm agent now. And like a good neighbor, State Farm. Trophy winner Mike Rozier leads the most explosive offense in the history of college football in a game that will decide the national championship. Top-ranked Nebraska battles Cinderella Miami in the Orange Bowl. The return up the far sideline by Zach Thomas just over the 20-yard line. Thomas was met on the play by number 54, Sanders Shiver. You know, we're looking at two, what is interesting today about this game, two very contrasting situations here, Jay. I'm going to show you this return up the sideline. As we're doing that, you know, you look at Baltimore, they're somewhat of an uptight team. Cush was very upset last week at the levity they showed on the sidelines. He said they weren't taking the game seriously enough. On the other side of the field, you have Denver, who felt that they what was responsible for their victory last week was the fact that they loosened up and they were having more fun and they were enjoying what they were doing. So it's two different, very, very different approaches we're looking at this afternoon. First and 10 from the 20 yard line. 1-11 left to play in the first quarter. And Elway giving it off. And Sam Winder. Sammy from Southern Mississippi. Now they must run the ball a lot with him to be successful along the ground. They really want to try and establish the run. They want to keep their defense off the field as much as possible, keep them fresh, because they really feel they rely so heavily on their defense. Seattle beat the Giants this afternoon, 17 to 12. New Orleans over Philadelphia in overtime. What did Barry Krause with that last tackle? It is second down and nine. 
Washington an early lead at Dallas. That's Watson coming in motion. Elway throws out into the flat to Sampson. And Sampson gets back up over the 25-yard line. Barry Kraus, number 55, make the tackle. Sampson started the day with six receptions, 161 yards. Rick Upchurch is out of the lineup. An injury to him, of course. Baltimore has played a pretty conservative defense throughout the year. They blitz when they have. They 85% of the time usually go with Vernon Maxwell. I think what we're going to see today, though, is we're going to see him take a few more chances. They're going to blitz strong side as well as weak with all their linebackers, try and put some pressure on Elway. So we come to the end of the first quarter here at Mile High Stadium. The Colts have a 3-0 lead over the Broncos. Holography. IBM is using it to speed you through supermarket lines. Inside this box is the innovative IBM checkout scanner. It uses holography to send out light beams that wrap around almost any package to quickly locate and read the barcode. The code identifies the product to a computer, which has the store's current price list. Holography, another way IBM puts technology to work for you. When I finish work, I can't wait to see what develops. It's easy to tell the guy who owns a Black & Decker workmate uh, from the guy who doesn't. The guy who doesn't tends to be determined, resourceful, inventive, a master of improvisation. On the other hand, the guy who owns a Black & Decker workmate is none of these. He's just plain smart. And now, get up to a $10 rebate on any Black & Decker workmate work center. There's never been a smarter time to buy one. Well, Mr. Chandler, I think by taking a quick look at those stats, we could say the Colts have dominated things here. They really have. You know, they've just been hurt with the, the penalties they had on those two big plays. That kind of thing has hurt them all year. It's the kind of thing that they haven't been able to come back from. They've dominated the time of possession, and they've moved the ball fairly well against Denver so far in that first quarter. Third down and four from the 26-yard line. John Elway at the controls, trying to get the Broncos untracked. Elway throws. It is complete. Short of the first down, right at the 30-yard line. The catch is made by number 34, Nathan Poole. And right on him was Cliff Odom, the linebacker. We'll take a look at it here. Cliff Odom, who took over for Johnny Cooks as a starter. They, all, they both play a lot. Covered Nathan Poole real well there and kept him from getting the first down. Luke Prestridge will come on to do the punting. Prestridge, who led the National Football League in 82 with a 45-yard average, punting to Larry Anderson. There's Prestridge. Denver kind of looks like they're feeling things out a little bit. They haven't really got on track offensively or defensively. We're kind of expecting them to do something here before long. Anderson comes up at the 29, steps across the 30, and is going the wrong way. He's got a lot of orange around him. Boy, oh boy. A 41-yard punt. And leading the way for the Denver Broncos, Dave Preston, number 46, and number 59, Darren Comeo. Time out here. But Canon came up with personal cartridge copying just to simplify my business. Why else would they make maintenance as easy as changing a cartridge? But now, Canon's PC-10 and PC-20 are minding everyone's business. Even my dentist has one. He changes copy colors faster than you can say, ah, Canon's PC copiers. Now they're minding everyone's business. Hey, these are mine. Oh, we'll use gas. For information, call toll-free. Canon personal cartridge copying. Plain and simple. You demand quality and durability. Plymouth builds it in. The 550 Plymouth Reliant K. 
The highest mileage six-passenger car in America. Match it. Match it for price, celebrity. The 550 Plymouth Reliant K. Backed with a five-year or 50,000-mile protection plan. Match it if you can. The new Chrysler technology. The best-built, best-backed American cars. Heisman Trophy winner Mike Rozier leads the most explosive offense in the history of college football in a game that will decide the national championship. Top-ranked Nebraska battles Cinderella Miami in the Orange Bowl following the Rose Bowl January 2nd on NBC Sports. Dan Reeves, the ninth head coach in Denver's football history. He was a quarterback in the early 60s at South Carolina. Played, of course, for the Dallas Cowboys. Assistant coach under Tom Landry. First and ten at the 28-yard line for the Colts. They're leading three to nothing. Pitch back comes to Alvin Moore. Moore getting near the 30. Across the 30 at the 31. Dennis Smith, number 49, made the play. It is Mike Pagel at quarterback. Pagel has been intercepted once every 19 passes this season. 15 interceptions and 288 passes. There's that Washington Dallas score again. John Elway's been intercepted once every 18 passes. Rams leading. San Diego on top of Kansas City and the Raiders doing it to St. Louis. And this ball was batted along the line of scrimmage. Looked like it was intended for Bernard Henry, number 88. And number 72, Don Latimer, appeared to get a hand up and bat it away. You mentioned, Bob, that the Broncos seem to be a bit lethargic after that, or in that first period. They're trying, I think, the defense right now to get things fired up a little bit, make some things happen. And we're going to see Latimer. A, yeah, we're gonna, there's Latimer batting the ball. You know what Pagel did? He had a play action, but he didn't really get back. He at least got to get three yards back. He faked the play action and was right up on the line of scrimmage, which made Latimer's job much easier there deflecting that ball. Dickey and McMillan are in the backfield, third and six from the 32-yard line. McMillan to the outside at the 40. Penalty marker goes down. McMillan is all the way down to the Denver 45, but they may bring it back. Now a little battle on the field. Tom Jackson is into it with Chris Hinton. They're separated very quickly. Jay, we're talking about Denver being lethargic. That's the kind of thing they need. Tom Jackson knows it when they're lethargic. He's their inspirational player. A little skirmish like that with, with Hinton is the kind of thing that might fire up a team like, uh, like Denver. And, of course, Hinton, number 75 of the... Baltimore Colts was the fourth player in the draft involved in the Elway deal, uh, an All-American at Northwestern. Offense, holding, third down. I'm sure Gratis Yard knew that when he picked him out to throw a couple punches there. I mean, excuse me, Tom Jackson. A holding call puts the ball back at the 27-yard line. Mickey and McMillan in the backfield, third and 11 from the 27. Pagel over the middle, and it is complete. That's Bernard Henry. Henry's all the way to the 44-yard line and a first down for the Baltimore Colts. Dennis Smith, the strong safety, made the tackle, and Pagel really put that ball on target. We're going to see that same half roll by Pagel, and he's throwing back across the field. Bernard Henry runs an in at about 20 yards, beats Mike Harden, runs a real, a real good route, makes the catch and picks up the first down. Hinton now has gone out of the lineup for the Colts, and Ben Utt, number 64, comes in to play left guard. First and 10 at the 43-yard line. 12.26 to go in the first half. Colts leading, three to nothing. Newton Williams, number 39 in the backfield with Moore, and he got near the 40-yard line. And underneath the pile, number 75, Rulon Jones, Randy Gratishar, and 65, Walt Boyer. Boyer's now playing the left end position for Chavis. He's number 65. Second down and seven. The Colts are leading on a 42-yard field goal by Raul Allegra, his 25th of the season. on the handoff to Newton Williams and he got only a yard as Jim Ryan the line
linebacker number 50 wrapped him up. That field goal by Raul Alegre set the new club record for the Colts. 25. 3 to nothing, Baltimore. Look at Frank Cush, the head man of the Colts. Hagel comes the other way, and it is incomplete. Almost intercepted, almost picked off by Louis Wright. Oh, boy, Louis. I know Felly should have had that one, and I guess he should have. Well, I think that surprised Louis. It's actually a real good throw here by Pagel. He hits Sherwin coming across the middle. They're throwing back across the grain a lot so far. Hits him right in the chest. Tries to make a chest catch rather than grab it in the hands, which is which is tough to do sometimes. It's all, always better if you're not in traffic to try and catch the ball in your hands. He dropped it there, and Louis Wright almost came up with the interception. Allegre is going to try a 56-yard field goal. Raul Alegre from 56 yards out. And it is good. Made it with no problem. 56 yarder. And that is the longest of his career. Earlier, he had kicked two of 52 yards. Yeah, he made that one with 10 yards to spare. Isn't he something? Raul Alegre from Texas. We'll watch again with Ron Stark holding. Here in Denver, with 10.55 to play in the first half, the Colts lead it six to nothing. Kodak presents four new 35 millimeter color print films. For detailed color, for versatility, for action, for low light, for all your holiday memories. New Kodak Color VR 100, 200, 400, and 1000 speed films. And now, Kodak lets you get better color disc pictures than ever before with new Kodak Color VR Disc Film. Christmas never looks so good. Lee Iacocca asked his engineers to build a sports car, make it fast, give it turbo power. Zero to 50, Chrysler Laser XE beats Camaro Z28. Make it handle. Front wheel drive laser beats Toyota Supra in the slalom. Back it with a five year, 50,000 mile protection plan and make it affordable. We did. Chrysler Laser XE. The competition is good. We had to be better. The new Chrysler technology. The best built, best backed American cars. Wednesday, when Dr. Caldwell is assaulted, his secret affair is exposed. Hiya, sweetheart. Sweetheart? You know, too. Wait a minute here. St. Elsewhere, Wednesday. Danny White to Doug Cosby. Washington 14, Dallas 7. There in the final minute of the first period. Here it is, 6 to nothing. The Colts. Allegre kicks off. And in the end zone, it'll be down by Zach Thomas. And Denver will take it at their own 20-yard line. The Bronco fans, a sellout crowd of more than 75,000, starting to cheer the offense on here and get them going a little bit. That's exactly what they have to do, Jay, is get going. You know, I, I look for John Elway to start testing that suspect, at least it's been suspect, Baltimore secondary. They played very well last week, led by Tate Randall. But they still are a weak spot in that defense, and we look for them to start getting the ball downfield a little bit. At Sampson going in motion. Pitch back coming to Winder, and there's nothing there. They strung it out very nicely, and Greg Graceland, 52, the linebacker, making the play, and the folks here are a little critical of the play calling. Graceland, who made the play, was originally a Denver number eight draft pick back in 1980. Loss back to the 14-yard line, or the 17-yard line, excuse me. I was right the first time. It's all the way back to the 14-yard line. Elway straight back, sets up, in trouble, and down he goes, and now a penalty marker is down also. Cliff Odom, number 49, flying in there to make the play back inside the two-yard line. But a penalty marker is down, and we'll wait to see what 
Referee Fred Silva sorts out here. Offense number 70. Holding. Decline. Third down. Dave Stutter charged for holding. It was declined. He originally was with Baltimore, a free agent who came over with the Denver Broncos. Dave Stutter out of Texas. Now back at tackle. Third down, 28 from the two. Got to be careful down here. Seven defensive backs. Elway out of the shotgun. Elway on the run. At the five, to the ten, and out of bounds. Nesby Glasgow ran him out. But Luke Prestridge will have to come in to do the punting as Elway's offense has lacked the spark that it had a week ago. Baltimore's been pretty impressive so far on defense. They're playing that kind of pressure defense that is so needed. They're trying to attack the pocket and get to Elway. They're bringing more linebackers than they have in the past. They're not playing that kind of conservative, predictable defense that they have so often this year. Westridge to punt to Larry Anderson. Broncos don't have a first down yet. The kick is away, and it is a dandy. All the way back at the 35, Anderson. Got away from one man looking for help. Down he goes at the 38-yard line. Fine play by Dave Preston, number 46. 53-yard punt and a good hang time. But the Colts leading six to nothing with 944 left in this first half. We'll have the ball at the 38 yard line. We'll be back with more NFL action in just a moment. Televideo personal computers equip the professional for success. Because Televideo's innovative design produces powerful, sensibly priced computers that communicate with one another and grow as rapidly as you do. Televideo, personal computers that equip you to attain that most coveted objective a business boom. Televideo, personal computers. Get it. Four-wheel and off-road magazine calls the Mitsubishi 4x4 turbo diesel a turbo diesel rocket ship. It's high performance at a down-to-earth price. The two-wheel drive Mighty Max is another rugged reason. Mini Truck Magazine calls the Mitsubishi truck lineup nothing short of magnificent. The price on the value-packed Mighty Max is only $57.49. Let your Mitsubishi Motors dealer take you where you've never been before. Here at Mile High Stadium, the Colts have the lead, six to nothing, Mr. Chandler. Well, it's it's about time for for Denver to get on track, Jay. I would, like you said, they haven't even had a first down so far today, so we expect them to do something here before long. Right now, they'll try to stop the Colts, who have a real weapon in Raúl Alegre. Bagel, play action on first down, throws wide open at the 45-yard line is Bernard Henry. And he's out of bounds at the 43-yard line. And the Colts look extremely sharp here. The play action is so effective for Baltimore because they run the ball so much. We'll see it here. It gives them a... Ties up those linebackers, makes them respect the run. Came out here. Bernard Henry ran an, ran an excellent out pattern. Had Mike Harden turned around. Made the first down. Going wide to the right is Porter. Henry goes to the left side. Pagel calls on Dickey. And he loses a couple. Fine play by Dennis Smith, the strong safety. He came up to make the play. A loss of two yards on the play. 9.20 to go in this first half. Chris Hinton is back at the left guard spot. It's Hart, Hinton, Donaldson, Wright, and Mason up front. wide to the right Henry set to the left side second down and 12 Hagel throwing and completing Bernard Henry again looks like he might have enough for the first down 
hopefully take a look at his route here. Just a simple out pattern. Not, nothing real fancy about it, but what that does, after you've run those a few times in front of a, a defensive back like Harden or any defensive back, it helps up, set something up for later in the game, whether it's an out and up, a hook and go, it helps develop your other patterns. Alvin Moore and Newton Williams are in the backfield. It is a first down at the 32. Moore gets a couple. Music. Jones and Gratishar are all there. Number 79, Chavis, back in at left end. Colts with eight first downs. The Broncos with none. Baltimore leading six to nothing on field goals of 42 and officially 55 yards on that second field goal by Raul Alegre. Hagel swinging it out and a bad throw. The throw came up short of Alvin Moore, and there's a penalty marker down. Pagel, the Colt record we indicated for rushing. He had 382 yards coming into today's game. This penalty will go against Baltimore. Pagel's a very intelligent young man. He has had some trouble reading defenses, but that's not uncommon for young quarterbacks in the National Football League. I imagine Mr. Elway's had his share, too. All placed at the 40-yard line. Number 39, holding, second down. Newton Williams holding on the play. See Zeke Barkowski there. He signals in the plays to Pagel. Second and 18 from the 40. And it is incomplete. At the 29-yard line, the pass intended for Tracy Porter. And he was out of bounds. They got Porter in a trade from Detroit back in August. Gave up a future draft choice for him. Porter, number 87 there, was a Detroit number four pick out of LSU. Third down conversion situation. Colts four out of eight. They're facing third and 18. Pagel throws in the middle and it is complete down to the 25 yard line short of the first down to Bernard Henry. Henry was hit by Mike Harden. It is not enough for the first down but it is time once again for Raul Allegre. Allegre now has kicked 26 of 30 field goals. Jay, I think it's it's time for Raul anytime they cross the midfield stripe here in, <laughs> here in Denver. Ball will be placed at the 32, a 42-yarder. He's kicked a 42-yarder and a 55-yarder already. Ron Stark holds. The kick is up, and it is good. And Raul Allegre does it again. A jumping jack from the University of Texas. Seven minutes and 23 seconds remaining to be played in the first half. And the Baltimore Colts have taken a 9 to nothing lead over the Denver Broncos here at Mile High Stadium. with a purpose. Colt for 84. A great buy. Imported for Dodge and Plymouth with front wheel drive. Room for five. Money saving mileage and miles of driving fun. Thinking GLC, Civic, Centra, or Tercel? Think Colt too. And check out its really low sticker price. The 84 Colt. Imported for Dodge and Plymouth. Built by Mitsubishi to give you a phenomenal import value. Now that's a purpose. 
Len Berman in New York, and the NFL has just determined that should Denver win this game today, they are in the playoffs. And should Seattle win next week, Denver would uh, be at Seattle in the wild card game December 24th. So important meaning for this game in Denver. Let's go back to Jay and Bob. All right, Len Berman, indeed an important game, but at the moment the Colts lead at nine to nothing, and the natives a little restless here as Allegre kicks. And the ball is down back there by Steve Wilson in the end zone. It'll come out to the 20-yard line, and once again, the Broncos will try to get something going. They do not have a first down in this first half. Elway is three for five for 22 yards. They haven't been able to do much running with Winder, establish anything on the ground, and Elway has been a little flighty with his throwing, been a little high on occasion. Well, you know, you've got to give Baltimore some credit there. They've been pressuring him all through the first and, and part of this second quarter. They've been able to do that, still covering up downfield, but putting a lot of pressure on Elway. Elway straight back this time, has time, throws, and it is incomplete. He was going for Clint Sampson, the rookie from San Diego State. Excellent coverage by Burroughs, the cornerback number 45. Burroughs has been improving. He's in his second year out of Michigan State. It's not a bad throw here. Once again, it's a little bit high. Sampson was well covered. They had Watson clearing out the middle, taking it deep. You should never throw over the middle, send a receiver over the middle without somebody clearing it out. Watson did that job, but they couldn't connect with Sampson. This Baltimore defense playing very tough here in the first half. Second down and ten. Single setback. Winder. Timeout is called as Elway took a look. Didn't like what he saw. Is going to come over and talk it over. While he does, we'll take timeout for these messages. There's something special happening at Kentucky Fried Chicken. Fresh butter milk biscuits made from scratch. Our chicken head biscuits are perfect match. Light and fluffy, they're made from scratch. We start with real buttermilk, and we make them fresh all through the day. Fresh, like our chicken, because that's the Colonel's way. Fresh buttermilk biscuits made from scratch. Our chicken and biscuits are perfect match. One more way, we do chicken right. Introducing the longest rust-through protection truck warranty in America. Five years or 100,000 miles. We are Dutch, and this is how we at no extra cost on all new 84 full-size pickups and Ram chargers. Plus, cash back from Dodge. $500 on 250 and 350 pickups and $400 on Ram chargers. At Dodge, we don't just talk quality. We prove it. We are Dodge. Dodge trucks are Ram truck. Come celebrate the new year with the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl. Can the Bruins of UCLA defend the Rose Bowl championship against the Big Ten champs, the tough fighting Illini of Illinois? What a battle, January 2nd on NBC Sports. As we look at the two coaches, we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is Colorado's News Channel, Channel 4, KCNC, Denver. Frank Cush and Dan Reeves and second down and 10 from the 20-yard line for John Elway. He's thrown four touchdown passes coming into today's game. This throw is high and wide of the intended receiver, Clint Sampson. Randall had the coverage, and Bobby didn't look like he took enough drop there to get comfortable to throw that football. It's a quick hitting route, Jay, but it's still a three-step drop by the quarterback. And even though it's a it's a timing route and it's a quick route, paramount for the quarterback is to set up and get his feet planted. He didn't do that there. He tried to rush it a little bit. Samson was open. John has to be a little bit more patient and let things develop before he lets go of the ball. Third down and 10 from the 20-yard line. And Elway coming out of the shotgun this time. And this one is batted away on a fine play by Nesby Glasgow. The pass was intended for Zach Thomas. It was really winged in there, but Glasgow made an excellent play. 
This Colt defense has just done a dandy job so far. There's no doubt that John Elway has a potential for greatness. We've seen him. They're going to expect a lot of him after his, his excellent performance last week, but he's going to have his ups and downs. He's probably weathered some of the toughest part of his career with his rocky start. But what he needs today is to back up last week with another solid performance. He's having a tough time getting started this afternoon. Luke Prestridge to punt. Anderson is downfield, a bad kick. And it is picked up at the 45, returned to the 49-yard line. Well, Anderson had more nerve than most men. He just stepped up and took that ball, a 35-yard punt. And the play made by Keith Bitchum, number 54 of the Denver Broncos. We take a timeout. The Colts lead 9 to nothing. Look at me. Do you like what you see? Good. Because it's not me. It's a recording of me on Mimrex videotape. This remarkable tape has been recorded and re-recorded 100 times. But I bet you still couldn't tell if it was Mimrex or me. Which really isn't me. It's Mimrex. Memorex videotape. Even after 100 recordings, you'll wonder, is it live or is it Memorex? East Point, Maine and Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. East Point means a New England clam bake, summer fun and food at its best. And Milwaukee means beer, cold, crisp, old Milwaukee beer and smooth, golden, old Milwaukee Light. And old Milwaukee. And old Milwaukee Light. Taste as great as their name. You know, guys, it doesn't get any better than this. With Bob Chandler, this is Jay Randolph at Mile High Stadium in Denver, Colorado. The altitude hasn't bothered the Colts up to now. Certainly not Raul Allegre. They're almost in field goal range again, aren't they? About five more yards, and he'll have a shot at it. Nine to nothing, Baltimore. Pagel using a long count. A little counter play. Handoff going to Dickey. And Dickey's inside the 45. This offensive line's doing a good job today. They gain to the 44-yard line. Number 75, Rulon Jones was there, along with Steve Busick, number 58. Denver's had, we'll take a look at it again here. Denver's had all year, the teams have moved the ball well down the field on them. It's kind of that bend but don't break defensive philosophy, but when they get down near the goal line, they've been able to stop them. But they haven't faced a kicker like Raul or Legre so far this year, I don't think. Wilson, 45, now playing the right corner spot for Harden. This is Dickey going the other way, gets to the outside, has a first down and more, and he's out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Dickey's quickness to the outside, showing very, very well. Good blocking. Lewis Wright ran him out of bounds over there, number 20. We're going to take a look at it here. Watch number 32, McMillan, just leaving the left part of your screen. We're not probably, we doesn't look like we're there, right at the end of it, he puts a block on Gratishar. It's amazing to me how effective he is and what a hard worker he is at trying to block for Dickey and then turn around and have to carry the ball himself. That's a tremendous physical effort on his part. First down. Pagel may have called an audible again using a long count and it jumped off. He did that a moment ago with some success when they ran the counter play. Looked like Hinton jumped off first. You know, you're talking about Randy McMillan, number 32. Say a word about him in just a moment. And number 75, ball start, first down. The call going against Chris Hinton. Randy McMillan, born in the community of Harvey de Gras, Maryland, not far from Baltimore. I remember it well because they used to have a racetrack there. <laughs> you never went there, did Harvey you? de Gras. <laughs> Or Grace, depending on your point of view, <laughs> if you're a Baltimorean. <laughs> Pagel on the run and throws incomplete. Tried to get it to Pat Beach, and uh, he was looking right into the sun, couldn't handle it. Let's go to New York, NFL 83. Thank you, Jay Randolph. Checking out the action in San Diego. Here come the Kansas City Chiefs. Bill Kenny at quarterback. 10-yard pass to Stefan Page. It's now 17-14, to 14, San Diego. Back to you, Jay. 
All right, thank you, Lynn. Boy, the San Diego club has been a mystery this year. The injuries, of course, that one big injury that hurt them so bad to Fouts, but they have been a tough club to figure out. Second down and 15 at the 40. Alvin Moore coming in motion. Hagel throwing long, and it is caught for a touchdown. And look at Zeke Barkowski. Is he happy? Are the Colts happy? And are they stunned here in Denver? 75,000 sitting here rather quietly at the moment. I don't think I've ever heard it so quiet. Denver brought a blitz. They brought Dennis Smith. They brought two of their linebackers. Ended up with Bernard Henry running one-on-one -on, -one on Wilson. Ran a corner route. It was an excellent throw by Pagel. He read the blitz, got rid of the ball quickly for the big touchdown. That's the longest of his career in the touchdown category. Raul Alegre bangs it through. And we have five minutes and 55 seconds left to play in the first half. The Baltimore Colts have a 16 to nothing lead over the Broncos. Let's remind you next Saturday at 3.30 Eastern time, NFL 83 kicks off Len Berman final regular season weekend and then we'll go to the Metrodome for the battle between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Minnesota Vikings. That's next Saturday right here on NBC Sports and while we're talking about upcoming events don't forget January 2nd first the Fiesta then the Rose and then the Orange Bowl. What a day that will be for the football fans of America. NBC Sports with those three great bowl attractions. Frank Cush, here's a man who has worked very hard. He's a serious-minded man about the game of football. I like to say he knows how to weed out the hitters from the quitters, and that's what he's been doing. And he's gotten their attention, I'll tell you. He's called this gut check time, Jay. You know, he still feels they have a lot to prove and he wants to keep improving these last two games. He's still filling this roster up. He doesn't want to make too many changes next year but he wants his kind of players making up that Baltimore Colt roster and he's still looking for a few replacements. His club is shutting out the Broncos here in the first half 16 to nothing. Allegre. Another one into the end zone and it's down there by number 82 Zach Thomas. First down for the Broncos. There you see the time. 58 seconds. They went 50 yards in four plays. The Broncos have to be careful that they don't get too far away from their game plan. They could really get in trouble. Yet they got to do something to get this offense untracked. Elway straight back. He swings it out to Winder. Winder's over the 25, out to the 30. First down. That's the first, first down of this game. I might mention this point in the proceedings with the score 16 to nothing that the Broncos have never been shut out here in Denver. Let's look again at a very fine run by Winder after he got the football. Well, now's the important time for Denver to do something at the end of this first half so they go in with a little momentum. It means so much to them before they come out and start that second half. Again, it's out to Winder. And he's out to the 38-yard line. That looked like the same play, except the Colts were blitzing. Good block by Paul Howard over there, number 60, the right guard. Tackle made by Wisniewski, 69, and Parker, 78. A lot of time left in this first half. Clock running with four minutes and 35 seconds remaining. The Colts are leading at 16 to nothing. Second down and two. Coach Dan Reeves. J. 
Gerald Wilhite is in the backfield now. Number 47. That's Wilhite. And very close to the first down. Looks like he's got it. Cliff Odom, number 49 on the tackle. Limping off is Wilhite. Looked like he hurt his right leg or it could be a hamstring pull. So the Broncos have something going. Three minutes and 45 seconds left to go in the first half. Winder and Poole in the backfield. That is Winder, the single setback. Egloff, the tight end going in motion. Long throw downfield, and it is caught! Watson makes a marvelous catch at the 12. There is a penalty marker down. Penalties against Baltimore. First down, Denver. I don't think I've seen a receiver make as tough a catches in traffic as Watson has made over the last few years. This is his second year that he's gone over 1,000 yards in his three years as a starter. Doesn't have great speed, but when he gets going, his long stride, he can run with anybody. Makes an over-the-head catch of a perfectly thrown ball and hangs on to it. That's what Denver needed here to get him going before this first half ends. 46-yard play. First down at the 12. Three minutes and 26 seconds left to go in the first half. Defense number 99. The illegal use of the hands prior to the pass. Decline. First down. The call went against Donnell Thompson of the Colts. It was declined. And this big crowd finally had something to cheer about as we look again at a marvelous reception by Steve Watson who played at Temple. After Steve's first big year a couple years ago, people in the league said it was a lucky year. This guy can't be that good. He's been that good every game since then. He was honored as the Broncos' man of the year here today. The handoff to Winder. Winder to the five, down to the three-yard line. Now they're roaring on every play here. Tackle made by Nesby Glasgow. We're getting a little cut back here. He bounces off his old man. He saw a hole there that didn't look like there was a hole. Bounced off a couple of Baltimore people. Picked up some good yardage on his own. Paul Howard, number 60, again doing an excellent job. Second down. Three for the touchdown. About two for a first down. pile up and the Colts have it at the two yard line. The Colts come away with it. So when the Broncos were knocking at the door, they cough it up. Second turnover, charge to Denver. Oh, the problem was with was that Tom Glassick? It was Glassick. It was, was Glassick pulling. pulling out, ran into his quarterback, and knocked the ball away. Well, I don't think John ever got a good handle on it from the center, so it slowed down his backing away from the line of scrimmage. Glassick was pulling. They ran into each other, and John lost the ball. Both teams playing with a lot of emotion now. at the three-yard line is Randy McMillan. Steve Foley came up to crack him down. Two minutes, 25 seconds left to go in the first half. Colts have three timeouts left. The Broncos have two. You'll remember that Elway called a timeout when he didn't like what he saw on one occasion. And they're going to let the clock run down to the two-minute mark. It's going to be second down and eight after we get the two-minute break. Well, the Denver Broncos missing a golden opportunity to score find themselves down 16 to nothing here late in the first half on a glorious day in Denver, Colorado. 
We'll be back to the capital city as the Colts lead it 16 to nothing. Hi, I'm Billy Joe Dupree of the Dallas Cowboys. I've just learned some important facts about high blood pressure from the American Heart Association. And what's that, Billy Joe? Millions of Americans suffer from high blood pressure and don't even know it. Do you know why? No, why? Because usually there are no obvious symptoms, so they have no idea it could lead to severe heart problems. You mean like stroke or heart attack? Right. That sounds serious. Exactly. And that's why more people need to know what to do. What's that? Take this simple, painless test to find out if you have high blood pressure. What if I do? You see your doctor immediately for advice on how to control it. Control it? Then there's no cure. Not yet, but we're working on it. How'd I do? You passed, but remember... I know, I know. Keep it checked. That's exactly what we wanted to hear you say. For more information, contact your American Heart Association. We're fighting for your life. The preceding announcement was furnished as a public service for the National Football League. Here's Watson making that fine catch a few moments ago. This got them in great shape, Bob Chandler. It was a great catch by Watson. Ended up going for not. They fumbled a couple plays later. Now Baltimore has the ball deep down in their territory. Second down and eight from the four. From the I formation. The give goes to Curtis Dickey. And he is stopped inside the one-yard line. Steve Busick, 58. Dennis Smith, 49, leading the way. Timeout, Denver. 151 remaining to be played. The Broncos could get this football back in pretty good shape. Coming up at halftime, NFL 83, we'll be bringing you up to date on all the happenings on this 15th weekend to play in the NFL. Well, 151 that, that, left. That looked close to being a safety there, Jay. It I, was close indeed. Let's remind you, too, that next Saturday night, got a basketball special for you at 11.30 Eastern time. The Memphis State Tigers, their All-American Keith Lee. They go up against the UCLA Bruins live from Pauley Pavilion. So stay with NBC, of course, next Saturday night and throughout the season for the best in college basketball. Well, it's hard to see whether they really get him there. You can see that his progress brought him outside of the goal line, and so that's where they marked the ball before they dropped him back behind. Denver's putting everybody up on the line of scrimmage. They're really pressuring them with their defense because they're kind of daring Baltimore to throw during this time. Septian has kicked a 35-yard field goal, and Dallas has crept back within four points of Washington late in the second period. John Elway, three out of eight, 22 yards. The big throw a few moments ago, of course, that got them in excellent shape before they fumbled it up was to Steve Watson. Now, here is third down. Ball just inside the one. Quarterback sneak by Pagel. Gets it out to the three. A timeout will be called with 1.46 remaining. Now, that's the last timeout for the Broncos. We can expect to see their two-minute offense when they come back out on the field. What they've done on the sidelines, Elway probably picked up two or three plays that they want to go with. He'll get in the huddle. He'll give them two plays, possibly three. Usually they do just two. They won't huddle. They'll try and get down and get something on the scoreboard before this first half ends. They missed a golden opportunity to score moments ago when Glassick ran into the quarterback. Zach Thomas will be the man to return the punt. Ron Stark will be the man to punt the ball for the Baltimore Colts. Stark and Allegre have really done a marvelous job for the Colts. Well, those are both two guys that, that wouldn't surprise anybody to see them in the Pro Bowl. They both had those kind of years. Stark going into this game was leading the National Football League with a 45.5 average. A great athlete, not just a kicker, was a decathlon man in school. They say he can do a lot of different things. Right now, he's got to get it away quickly. Backed up on the end line. Zach Thomas downfield. And he booms it out of there. It's a dandy. Thomas all the way back to the 30. Turns and comes up field at the 40. 
at the 45, gets to the 49-yard line, and Denver has a minute and a half to operate. A 64-yard punt when he needed it. Stark really came through. Ricky Jones for Baltimore made the tackle. Excellent form for this gentleman right here. Well, it's a great kick when they needed it. The extension on the leg that he has is, is tremendous. The flexibility that and the strength that some of these kickers have in the league nowadays is amazing. Will Hyde 47 and Preston 46 are in the lineup. Elway's going to operate from the shotgun. They're out of timeouts. Elway over the middle, batted by number 56. Vernon Maxwell, the linebacker, just got a hand on it. Trying to go to Dave Preston there. Vernon Maxwell made a, made a great play. Preston was open. Some scores. New England and the Rams 7-7. Seven, seven. San Diego leads Kansas City. And the Cardinals have come back against the Raiders. We'll bring you up to date at halftime on all the activity. They're calling Stark's punt a moment ago. A 68-yarder, the longest of his career. Second and 10. Colts are coming. The throw is complete. Down to the 42-yard line. Anderson puts the clamps on Wilhite. Clock is running now with 1.15 left to go in this first half. Elway out of the shotgun again without a huddle. They're spread out for him. Down he goes. And coming in to make the play was Henry Waxter. Waxter, who played at Nebraska, an extra man up on the line of scrimmage as they're coming after Elway. 58 seconds left to go, second down and 19. Elway throws it away to stop the clock. And they'll have time to talk it over and see if they can get a big play, something going. They are shut out at the moment, 16 to nothing. Well, Denver is, is continuing the kind of, uh, excuse me, Baltimore is continuing the kind of pressure that they've been putting on Elway all afternoon. They're using a four-man line now to try and add a little heat to that rush, but they're not sitting back as a defensive secondary and just hoping they won't score. They're blitzing their linebackers, and they're using a lot of man-to-man -man coverage in that secondary. Well, of course, earlier in the year, and the Baltimore fans will remember, it was not a very warm welcome for Mr. Elway when he went to Baltimore. And uh, Elway started that game, was 9 of 21 for 106 yards, but it was DeBerg who won it on a touchdown with 29 seconds left. Now it's third and 19. Elway goes down all the way back at the 37-yard line, the third sack for the Baltimore Colts. I'll tell you, when they decide to come, they make it happen. Well, that time, Greg Bracelin, as we see him here, number 52, applied the pressure. He wasn't dropped back off into the pass coverage. We'll see him in the middle of your screen there on a blitz. He gets a little tied up, then forces Elway out of the pocket and makes the tackle for the sack. Bracelin, of course, again, I'll mention a former Denver Bronco. Spent a short time with the Raiders. He was on their team uh, the year they won the Super Bowl. Has a great special teams player, but has really found his niche in Baltimore, and they feel has been one of the most consistent defensive players they've had all year. He's been starting since Cooks was moved inside his second year at Baltimore. Prestridge will punt, and now a whistle, and they're going to take a penalty for delay of the game. Colts got three in the first period, 13 in the second. They have three field goals from Allegra. Larry Anderson is downfield. Floater, Anderson battling the sun a little bit, lets it hit. And it is going to be downed at the 34-yard line, seven seconds remaining to be played in this first half. Luke Prestridge not very pleased with that punt. Well, I think you can bet Baltimore is going to sit on this and go in and feel very comfortable 
at least satisfied with their performance in this first half. 32 yard punt. There's Dan Reeves. Very dedicated gentleman. John Elway there with him. Denver's still in this ball game, but they're going to have to do a little talking to themselves at halftime to come out and play with a little bit more emotion and get some things happening for them. Hagel, look here. He's going for the bomb, and it is incomplete. And it was Terry Porter who wanted a call, Tracy Porter, I should say, who wanted a call. He was covered by Steve Wilson. Jay, they just heard me say that, so they went against what I was going to say. They tried to make me be a liar here, and they went, <laughs> they went for the bomb. I love to see that. That accomplishes a lot. Even though they weren't successful on it, it shows them that they're not content with a 16-point lead. They're 17-point lead. They're going to go for it. All right. That's the end of the first half. 16 to nothing, Baltimore. For the extra demands of physical fitness, new Spartus, the different high-potency formula to supplement your diet. Spartus, with every essential vitamin and mineral in the USRDA, and more, more of the vitamins that help convert food and body fat to energy. Spartus, with electrolytes essential for muscle action. Spartus, every essential vitamin and mineral, and more, the extra strength formula for the extra demands of physical fitness. Spartus, the official sports vitamin of the 1984 Winter Olympics. For the past two years, I've been telling you, with uh, some interruptions, that an independent test for best color picture, the Sylvania Superset beat RCA, Zenith, and Sony. Well, this year, we again asked over a thousand people which TV had the best overall color picture. And uh, more of them picked the 19-inch Sylvania Superset over RCA and Zenith and Sony, too. Nandeska, Kondadeska, Sylvania beat Sony again, Toste, Biscaydesho. Three field goals by Raul Allegre and a 40-yard pass from Pagel to Henry. 16 to nothing here at halftime in Denver. Let's go now to New York and NFL 83. The baseball meetings ended this week in Nashville, Tennessee, and guess what? We still don't have a new baseball commissioner. Bowie Kuhn has been extended until March. Lots of names have been bandied about as a successor. Folk singer Dick McCormick has a lighthearted look for us at some of the candidates. Down the foggy halls of time, some guys are one of a kind. Davy Crockett, Daniel Boone, and Bowie Kuhn. Dr. G or Matty might come from Yale, but he ain't no Bowie Q. Instead of win-lose, we'd have pass-fail. He ain't no Bowie Q. He'd make them quote Shakespeare when they got to spatting. Sing Bula Bula away and ever batting. The games will be called in classical Latin. He ain't no Bowie Q. Lee Iacocca is a corporate Houdini, but he ain't no Bowie Q. He kept the wolf from the door when things got lean, but he ain't no Bowie Q. Now if the twins go broke, he'll be the man. He'll have a billion bucks in hand. All guaranteed by Uncle Sam, but he ain't no Bowie Q. William Simon, he might love that green, but he ain't no Bowie Q. He'll squeeze a dollar till the eagle screams, but he ain't no Bowie Q. He wouldn't care if things got hairy and guys like George Brett acted scary. As long as it's not inflationary. He ain't no Bowie Kuhn and Gerald Ford was once the chief exec. But he ain't no Bowie Kuhn. Tricky Dick struck out, he was right on deck, but he ain't no Bowie Kuhn. He'd make the pennant race too tame. The scores would always be the same, cause he'd pardon the loser of every game. He ain't no Bowie Kuhn. Seems like I'm picking on the Republicans here. Well, Frank Mankiewicz is a Democrat, but he ain't no Bowie Kuhn. He was Lyndon Johnson's ball and bat, but he ain't no Bowie Kuhn. He had a great society education and ran public radio for the nation. If either one is any indication, he ain't no Bowie Kuhn. Jack Valenti is a porno hater, but he ain't no Bowie Kuhn. He's the movie industry's master raider, but he ain't no Bowie Kuhn. 
Now George and Billy would be PG. Dickie Nose would have X-rated screes. And Steve Garvey, he'd be rated G. Just like Bowie Kuhn. Peter Uberoff, he's out in L.A., but he ain't no Bowie Kuhn. He's used to jocks who don't get paid. He sure ain't Bowie Kuhn. It hasn't exactly brought him fame organizing the Olympic Games, but at least he's got a goofy name. Just like Bowie Kuhn. Maybe the best candidate to succeed Bowie Kuhn is Bowie Kuhn. That's what more and more people are saying. And Dave Marish, you studied the situation this past summer. What are your thoughts? Well, I can certainly say this. Bowie won't take the job. He has said his <laughs> last right. extension to March 1st is his final extension. There are good reasons why it's taking so long to find a successor to Bowie Kuhn. There are several things that the job no longer has, money being one of them, the salary that used to be very upscale in today's era of inflated executive salaries is just so-so. Then there's fame. Remember when Kennesaw Mountain Landis, the judge, was commissioner? He was baseball. Now every owner thinks that he is bigger than the commissioner. This carries over not just in headlines and dinner invitations, but in the real equations of power. The commissioner just doesn't have that much clout anymore, and a lot of the guys they're asking to take the job are used to more clout than the commissioner's office carries. Why should they take a step down? And finally, you'd think this would be the job to take because it's so much fun. You get to go to baseball games. You get to meet the players. You get to have a wonderful time. Well, if fun is being chased around by a George Steinbrenner or a George Argeros, it is the kind of fun that not very many top-rated candidates are after. And as Mr. McCormick noted, just about everybody but Yuri Andropov has been nominated, and he's too ill to take the job. Perhaps, yeah. And uh, the irony here is the Bud Selig search committee, uh, no names have leaked out, which means they either have excellent security or they have no candidate. I guess the point on that search committee is that the committee finally turned to Selig and said, said, Bud, why don't you take it? And his answer was, not me. Not me. All right. Well, thank you, Dave. And that'll do it on the Bowie Cued story. And from New York, our halftime activities will continue in just a minute. Tonight, there's explosive action when a murder attempt leaves Michael with amnesia. Michael, have you really forgotten me? Can Kit save him when the killer strikes again? A Knight Rider. Then a crazy lady in a bantamweight bandit give the Smokies the slip. <laughs> the bad guys, the clip. Robert Blake and Diane Cannon going coast to coast tonight. Be there. Sims Tire Centers presents the Sims Information Index. Subject, Michelin Tires. Michelin has put America on radials. Reason, high quality at affordable prices. Subject, Michelin X radials. Designed for fuel savings and long mileage. Subject, Sims Tires. Michelin selection for foreign and domestic cars at very low prices. Conclusion, keep these two names filed together. Michelin and Sims Tire Centers. You can't choose the right tire if you don't have a choice. When you stop by McDonald's for lunch or dinner, you want your meal and you want it fast. So here's McDonald's promise to you. We'll have your lunch or dinner ready in less than 60 seconds after you place your order at the counter, or you get a large sandwich free on your next visit. Driving through? We'll have your order in less than 60 seconds after your car reaches the drive through window, or you'll get a free large sandwich on your next visit. Lunch or dinner at McDonald's in less than a minute. Guaranteed. McDonald's and you. More and more people are choosing Colorado as their place to be, and the people to choose for help with commercial and residential real estate are Metro Brokers. Why Metro Brokers? Metro Brokers are full-time career specialists who know the market and real estate financing. I want someone who will take a personal interest in my needs. Metro Brokers are well acquainted with schools, residential areas, and commercial opportunities. Look for the nearest of 20 Metro Brokers offices in the yellow pages or call 337-6721. You can count on Metro Brokers. Feliz Navidad from Channel 4. Birmingham, New York for NFL 83. That other little game in Texas. Uh, Washington's leading Dallas 14 to 10, but they're also at halftime, so hang around. We have some scores and highlights to tell you about. If Denver comes back and wins this game, as we mentioned before, they clinch a wild card. That would be it. If Seattle wins next week, Seattle would clinch a wild card, and Denver would play Seattle at Denver if Denver wins this week and next week. That clears that up. Here are all the scores and highlights now. Houston knocking off Cleveland, 34 to 27. So Pittsburgh clinches the AFC Central as a result of that. Sam Ritigliano's club has suddenly cooled off. They were red hot a couple of weeks ago. Look at this play in the first quarter. Earl Campbell hands it off to Steve Bryant. The wide receiver throws a 24-yard touchdown pass to Timmy Smith. 
a gorgeous play for the Houston Oilers. They took the lead 10-3, but they lost the lead in the third quarter. Mike Pruitt ran it for six yards, and Cleveland then led 27-24. But now in the fourth quarter, the score is tied. Oliver Luck from 43 yards away. Hey, this kid looks pretty good, doesn't he? Tim Smith, two touchdown receptions for Smith. Houston wins it. They win their second of the year, 34 to 27. A big game for both clubs, and San Francisco knocked off Buffalo, 23 to 10. So Buffalo drops to eight and seven as Joe Ferguson looks at his dental records or his high school graduation pictures, something. First quarter, here's Joe Cribbs, 46-yard run. Beautiful run by Cribbs down to the 49 or 24-yard line. That set up a Buffalo touchdown. But San Francisco and Montana. Here, Joe strikes. Four-yard touchdown pass to Roger Craig in the third quarter. That gave the 49ers the lead for good. This iced it. Wendell Tyler, two yards away. The win for San Francisco. And, of course, that's important for Ram fans and New Orleans fans. Chicago and Minnesota. Chicago won, but both teams were eliminated. Cincinnati over Detroit. Detroit doesn't clinch yet. Seattle's alive, knocking off the hapless Giants, 17 to 12. And now, Bill McAtee with more for us. All right, Lenny, New Orleans and Philadelphia at Veterans Stadium. They had to go to overtime in Philadelphia, and the Saints finally won it on a 50-yard field goal. Came from the toe of Morton Anderson, so the Saints' playoff hopes are still alive. All right, those are the finals. Here are the games still in progress down at Texas Stadium. They're about to begin the third quarter. It is 14 to 10. The Cowboys, though, only 32 yards rushing in the first half. A cleanly played ball game, no turnovers. At Anaheim, New England and the Rams all tied up at seven. Vince Ferragamo has thrown a TD pass. Ron Meyer headed west early this week to get out of the snow in New England, but he looked on as Ferragamo connected on a touchdown pass in the first quarter. This of 46 yards to number 84, George Farmer. Fifth TD reception of the year for Farmer, who does a nice job running the football. 22nd TD pass of the year for Ferragamo. Eric Dickerson, by the way, the NFL's leading rusher, 51 yards in the first half. Here's how the Patriots scored. It came on a four-yard run by number 30, Mosi Tatupu around the left side. It is all tied up, 7-7 seven to seven at the half in Anaheim. Baltimore and Denver, the game you're watching, bit of a surprise, 16 to nothing, and of course the Broncos with a playoff slot on the line. Randy Gratishar playing his last regular season home game, Mile High Stadium after 10 years. Good first half from the rookie out of the University of Texas, Raul Allegre. Three field goals, 56-yarder here, the longest of his young career. And here's the only touchdown of the first half. Came from the arm of Mike Pagel. 40-yard TD pass into the arms of number 88, Bernard Henry. 16-0 Baltimore at the half. Kansas City and San Diego, Dan Fouts has thrown three touchdown passes, 24-14 to at Jack Murphy Stadium. The Raiders are playing for the home field advantage throughout the playoffs. They lead St. Louis, though, a surprisingly close game by a score of 24 to 20. Now, Ahmad, we've watched some teams with a lot on the line. We, we changed that. There was a different score there. We've watched some teams with a lot on the line today kind of look flat. Well, I think it was the other teams, really, that were responsible for these teams looking flat. Uh, the only thing you can do when you're not having a very good season is play the best football you can and try to knock off some of these teams that are headed for the playoffs. And that's really what's happened all day. Okay, Ahmad Lenny. All right, to update that score, while you were on, St. Louis scored and took the lead on the Raiders, 27 to 24. Some boxing news. Sugar Ray Leonard last night announced he is coming back to the ring. And today, Larry Holmes resigned his WBC heavyweight title. He said he is now the champ of something called the International Boxing Federation. Whatever that is, politics go on in boxing. For the second half at Mile High Stadium in Denver, Colorado, 75,000 plus on hand, 101st consecutive sellout for Denver, and the Colts dominating 16 to nothing at halftime. Look at the time of possession, look at the total yards, and that pretty much tells the tale. Turnovers, too. I think Denver's a little shell shocked uh, still. They came out, Baltimore has pulled some things out of the hat that they haven't done all year. They've kind of played a pressure offense and defense. They've had a vertical attack where they've moved the ball down the field and kind of caught Denver by surprise. I was just talking to Bob Swenson, the injured linebacker, that great linebacker for Denver. He said before the game, in the locker room, Denver was very quiet and he thought that was real good because they were nervous. They knew this was a big game. They had to win it. And he said, he is surprised and has no answer for the way they've performed so far this first half. Well, we're going to play a whole game, so here we go into the second half. Allegre kicks off Wilson and Thomas, and it is Wilson. He's coming out, gets to the 20, and to the 24, maybe the 25-yard line. Sanders Shiver, who does a fine job for the Colts on the specialty units, made the tackle. Ball just short of the 25-yard line, and John Elway comes on to lead the offense. 
Winder 23 and Poole 34 in the backfield with him. Watson, Sampson, Egloff, the receivers. Ryan with Bishop and Howard, Studdard and Lanier. Down 16 to nothing. The Broncos start offensively in the second half. Elway on first down. Has time and he throws complete. And at the 35 yard line, Clint Sampson, number 84, made the catch. The tackle made by James Burroughs, number 45. And it's a first down. The Colts have Thompson and Parker at the ends. Odom, Kraus, Maxwell, and Bracelin at the linebacker spots. Wisniewski's the nose tackle. Burroughs and Randall, Anderson and Glasgow in the secondary. Opening moment of the third quarter here at Mile High Stadium. Winder the single setback in motion Watson. Play action. Elway throws and it's complete to Egloff the tight end. Egloff gets it to about the 40 yard line and is shaken up on the play. He's having his finest year ever. The seven year man from Wisconsin had only 10 receptions last year had 18 coming into today's game. Egloff shaken up Steve Antonopoulos the trainer attending to him as we look again at this play. We'll take a look at him here. Egloff had an interesting comment in the paper this week. He said he has a burst of slow. <laughs> He's been they get on him about his speed but he said it's better to deceive than to receive and that's what he does and that's the position they have him playing. He's in motion a lot. He switches sides. He does a little bit of everything. He acts like a running back with his blocking lead blocking and has caught the ball effectively this year when they've thrown to him. John Sawyer number 83 takes over for him. Will Hyde and Poole in the backfield. The quick throw is incomplete as it bounced up off the hands of Will Hite. And Will Hite had Larry Anderson closing on him quickly. They'll use Will Hite in that, in that way occasionally. They'll split him out as a wide receiver to give him a three wide receiver look. They say he runs excellent patterns and, and catches the ball very well. Third down and five at the 40 yard line. Colts are leading 16 to nothing. Number 47, Will Height. See him come out. He's in the backfield now with Poole. Two wide receivers set to the far side. Elway throws, and it is dropped. Will Height had the first down at the 46-yard line, dropped the ball. Coverage by number 34, Jeff Delaney, the extra defensive back, in there for the Colts. It was a catchable ball and he he did one thing right. He got the first down yardage. He had that. So all he had to do was hang on to the ball. He couldn't do it. Denver's going to have to give it up again. Luke Prestridge. 43.8 average on five punts today. Larry Anderson is downfield. Wobbly kick. Anderson comes up, takes it at the 25, at the 30. 35, trying to get outside and almost did. He got to the 39-yard line. Dumped over there by Nathan Poole, number 34. So the Colts, leading 16 to nothing, have the football. They're going to get it at their own 39-yard line. As we look again at this return, we'll take a timeout. You're looking at style and technology in total harmony. It's the new 84 Ford Tempo. Tempo's unique aerodynamic design contributes to mileage this high. There's technology like four-wheel independent suspension to absorb impact. A new high-swirl combustion engine gives Tempo quick power response. And Tempo's front-wheel drive delivers responsive handling and good traction. The new Ford Tempo. Get the tempo of your life. Have you driven the best-built American cars? Have you driven a Ford lately? There's more for your Christmas at Sears. More choice.
choices and more savings, too. Save $80 on this color TV with quartz precision tuning and one-button color, just $379.99. Save $120 on this stereo with eight track and two cassettes for dubbing. This programmable VCR with forward and reverse picture search and pause control is only $349. So wrap up a beautiful Christmas. Today's game is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By RCA, makers of innovative video products that will open your eyes. And by Visa cards and traveler's checks. You can do it, and we'd like to help. Along with Bob Chandler, this is Jay Randolph at Mile High Stadium in Denver. 13.06 to play in the third quarter. Colts leading 16-0. First and 10, Baltimore from their own 39-yard line. Again, they try that little counter play, and Dickey has to go back the other way. There's a penalty marker down. Dickey couldn't find anything in the middle. Did some good freelancing. Lewis Wright on the tackle number 20, along with 79, Barney Chavis in the penalty against the Colts. You know, I look at some, some excellent Denver defensive players missing tackles today. And so you have a tendency to think that they're just not fired up about it. We'll listen Offense, to the penalty here. Illegal motion, number 79. Lindsey Mason, the right tackle. The call went against him. But in actuality, Jay, you know, I think it's you got to give Dickey and McMillan a lot of credit. They are two fine running backs, and they'll make people miss tackles. McMillan started the day with a 4.1 rushing average. Dickey with a 4.3 rushing average. First and 15 now from the 34. Hagel over the middle, wide open is Pat Beach, the tight end, number 81. And they get some of it back up to the 41-yard line. Beach out of Washington State, a six-round pick. He'd only caught two passes coming into today's game. We'll mention again that Sherwin, although he has seen some action, has a neck injury. It'll be second down and seven. Baltimore may have seen Denver secondary over the past few weeks really flow with a kind of a roll. So what he's been doing is rolling out and throwing back across the grain most of the afternoon. And this one is out into the right flat intended for Randy McMillan. He really didn't have much of a chance to catch it as the ball was too far in front of him. Clock stopped with 12-18 left in the third quarter. Denver sends in number 77, Mecklenburg, the rookie. And also another defensive back as they'll go to a prevent defense now on third down and seven. Three wide receivers for the Colts. Porter, Otis, and Henry are in there. Henry to the left, Porter and Otis to the right. Pagel straight back. Throws, and it is complete. A fine catch for a first down at the 48-yard line made by Tracy Porter. Pagel and Porter combining for a first down right here. It starts with excellent protection by the offensive line. You see Hinton, Donaldson looking around to help out. Pagel steps up in the pocket, and Porter sets down in that dead zone there where they have a little bit of time to make the completion if they get it in. Wide to the right goes Henry. Beach is back in at tight end as Otis has come out. It is first and 10 at the 48-yard line of Denver. Colts controlling this game. That's McMillan banging off right tackle down to the 42-yard line. McMillan played at Pittsburgh. His best day this year was 109 yards against Philadelphia. Radishar, 53, and Jackson, 57, made the play. And it'll be second down and four. This is a different kind of Colts offense, and I think most people are, are used to seeing this year from them. They're really mixing it up today. They're running. They're keeping the ball on the ground, but yet they're throwing the short passes. They've thrown some screens. They're throwing the intermediate routes, and they've gone downfield with the ball also. And they've held on to the ball, haven't turned it over. It's always a big factor. And certainly it is with a young club. Here is a problem. As the center would... Just refused to give that ball back to his quarterback that time, it looked like. Ray Donaldson, what a fine player. He's got a hip pointer. He's got an ankle problem. 
the big guy from Georgia is hanging out there. Referee Fred Silva discussing the penalty, and we'll step it off back to the 46-yard line. Offense, ball start, number 18. Will the stadium clock operator please put the clock back to 10.48? We lost eight seconds. There, because of this move right here by Pagel, a false start, they will put eight seconds back on the clock. Just a little anxious there to get going. And we're looking at two of the finest centers in the game with Brian and Donaldson on both these respective teams today. It's going to be second down and nine. This big crowd chanting defense, hoping their team can stop the Colts. Hagel throwing, and a fine catch is made by Pat Beach. Very close to a first down. Beach took that ball in at around the 38-yard line. Dennis Smith, 49, and Steve Wilson, 45, with Randy Gratishar, number 53, were all there. And we make it a measurement, or they may be just about a yard shy. Let's take a look. It'll be just about a yard short. Maybe a little less than a yard. Excellent catch here by Pat Beach. He reaches up, catches the ball in his hands, throwing a little high, comes down with the catch. Just short of the first down. Double tight end alignment. In motion, Sherwin. The handoff goes to McMillan, and he has got the first down, I believe. Let's see where they actually spot that ball. It is a first down. At least it appears to be from here, but they may ask for the chains, and I think they will. We have nine minutes and 54 seconds remaining to be played in the third quarter. And the Colts are shutting out the Broncos 16 to nothing. Well, we're in three-point range now. Raul Alegre has had a big day already, and it is a first down. Sent the man in motion to the right side here, Bob, and gave it to number 32, McMillan. Excellent blocking by the right side of the line. Gave him the opening. It's tough, tough to stop a back for 205-pound back on that short yardage like that. Roger Jackson, number 28, now a free safety for the Broncos. First and 10 at the 37-yard line. Hagel, play action, steps up. He throws. It is complete. First down. Bernard Henry again. He's been in the clear all day long. They're playing rather soft back there against him as Wilson and Jackson were beaten on the play. Here it is. We'll see Bernard Henry's route here. Fakes a post. Pagel stepped up into the pocket. Hit him. They're giving him a lot of room out there this afternoon. They're not really pressuring those wide receivers on the outside. Again, a look at it, and as I indicated, they're playing very soft, and as Bob says, that's, a, that's giving them a lot of room. Well, it's a first down at the 16-yard line. Moore and McMillan now in the backfield for Baltimore. Handoff goes to Alvin Moore, trying to get outside, and they're over there that time. They banged him out of bounds. No gain on the play. Let's go now to NFL 83 in New York and get this update on the activities today. All right, thank you, Jay Randolph. Len Berman in New York. Here goes Theotis Brown for Kansas City. 49 yards. Not bad for a team that's dead last in the NFL in rushing. Kansas City now within three of San Diego. Let's go back to Jay and Bob. Thank you, Len. And uh, Theotis Brown, who used to be at Seattle and before that was with the Cardinals, has found a home in Kansas City. Second down and 10 at the 16-yard line. Pagel on the bootleg, coming out on his own. He's at the 10 and slides down at the 9-yard line. Well, if he wanted to really take things into his own hands, he might have been able to get a three or four more, but he wisely slid down. Frank Cush, his club leading 16 to nothing and trying to get more. I don't think the headache would have been worth it, Jay, to pick up another couple of yards because he probably would have got one or two. He's running with the option to throw, but he didn't really have any targets to go to, so he wisely slid into second base there and picked up six, seven yards. 
Porter goes to the right side. Henry to the left. Dickey and McMillan in the backfield. Third down and three from the nine. That's Curtis Dickey, and he stopped right at the line of scrimmage. And we'll get the call for Raul Allegre. Excellent play by Tom Jackson. When you give it to that far back and you ask him to go across the length of that backfield, it gives a player with Tom Jackson's quickness a chance to catch up from behind, which he did there, brought Dickey down. Allegre, who has kicked three field goals of 42, 55, and 41, now has what is a chip shot for him. Maybe this is his weak area, Jay. We don't. I'm not sure he has a weak area. <laughs> He's a tremendous, tremendous kicker. Ron Stark will hold. The ball will be spotted at the 17. And it is a 27-yard field goal right up the middle. You know, the only thing we may hope for is that he gets tired jumping up after and running off the field after each field goal. He may wear out before this is over. Raul Allegre makes it 19 to nothing. His fourth field goal of the afternoon. We'll be back with more from Denver in a moment. I'm looking for jeans that stay blue. Try dress blues by Lee. You bet I will. Fit like a glove. Mike, all you have to do is look for the patch. Lee Jeans, the brand that fits. The Square Edge car has no room in the future. World champion driver Jackie Stewart. I don't think you're going to see any manufacturer producing that box look. It's a yesterday's car. Ford Motor Company have pioneered airflow management. And I think within the next two or three years, you will see the competitors producing cars that will be remarkably similar to what Ford are now producing today. Have you driven the best-built American cars? Have you driven a Ford lately? Next Saturday, don't miss a special NFL 83. This one's an interconference war. The Cincinnati Bengals roar into Minnesota against the always tough Vikings. The NFL season goes into its final weekend. What a battle on NBC. Broncos are being shut out at the moment, 19 to nothing. Allegre will kick off. Wilson and Thomas are back. Wilson comes out at the 10, the 15, at the 20-yard line. He goes down. Leading the way, number 35, Tate Randall. Number 52, Greg Braceland. There's Allegre's stats today, 13 out of the 19 points. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is Colorado's News Channel. Channel 4, KCNC, Denver. Jay Randolph and Bob Chandler at Mile High Stadium, where the Colts at the moment are doing a job on the Broncos. Completed upfield at the 35-yard line. As the pass went to Watson, Tate Randall made the tackle. It'll be a first down. They'll give the forward progress to the 34-yard line. That was a good throw from Elway. I think we're going to have to see a lot more of this if Denver wants to get back in this game, Jay. They have to go to Steve Watson more often. They've gone to him twice today for big plays. He is their, their clutch receiver with an arm like Elway and the kind of patterns that Watson runs. Unless they double him and take him completely out of the picture, they should go to him much more in the second half. Watson, a free agent find from Temple University. First down from the 34. Elway over the middle, short of his intended receiver, Watson. And they had a blitz coming from the right side. And Elway took a tumble. He got that ball away, but had to rush it a little bit, and it came up short. Well, that was the reason the ball was underthrown. They ran an interesting route there. They had Clint Sampson coming from the right side, Watson from the left, and they were both running ends. So Elway has to get the ball off quick to one of those two guys before they converge upon each other. Second down and 10. Six minutes, 50 seconds left in the third quarter. 
Sampson goes in motion. The pitch back comes. The winder. And winder gets to the 35-yard line. Jeff Delaney, number 34, made the tackle for the Baltimore Colts. This Colt defense doing an excellent job. Colts defensively playing with a lot of emotion this afternoon. You see the support and they're filling. There's a lot of pursuit. They're gang tackling. They're doing everything a first place team would be doing at this stage of the season. Third down and nine. Elway out of the shotgun has got to hurry. Down he goes. The sack for number 98, Johnny Cooks. Cooks, the number one draft choice three years ago from Mississippi State, and Elway a little disgusted. He was in the shotgun. That's supposed to give him extra time, but Cooks didn't care. A frustrating day so far for Elway and the Broncos. Prestridge to punt. Larry Anderson set to receive. wobbly kick and it bounces straight up in the air and comes back the other way and it's going to be spotted at the 39 yard line Prestridge not having one of his better days a 32 yard punt five minutes 32 seconds left to go in the third quarter 19 zip Baltimore now, for 1984, Ford takes off with a great lineup of tough 4 by 4s To show you how tough they are, we're going to lower them into this giant crater and watch them try to climb out. Here's the full-size pickup with the most powerful 6 in any pickup. And Ranger with the most powerful V6 in any small truck. The trim Bronco 2 and full-size Bronco. The 84 Fords. Tops for toughness. The best-built American trucks have built Ford Tough. Shotgun Rapids, Idaho, in Milwaukee, folks mean something great to these guys. The shotgun means white water at its best. And Milwaukee means beer. Cold, crisp, old Milwaukee beer. And smooth, golden, old Milwaukee light. And old Milwaukee. And old Milwaukee light. Taste as great as their name. You know, guys, it doesn't get any better than this. 19 to nothing Baltimore as we pan that sidelines there's no giggling going on there may be a little smiling I guess that can be allowed coach Cush was very upset with a couple of his players last week who were in a apparently uh, happy mood after that gut wrenching loss to the Jets and off goes to Curtis Dickey and Dickey very close to a first down as he slides and glides near the 50 yard line. This is getting to be old news, but what made that play go is the lead block here by McMillan. Takes out the penetration, puts him right on its back. And then you see a few extra moves there by Dickey. Some of the finest running you're going to see right there. Can he run with the football? I'll tell you. He's special. It's an interesting case there, Jay, in, in Baltimore with Dickey. He doesn't really open himself up to the press. He doesn't talk to people. It's not, I don't think that he is unhappy about being in Baltimore it says very suspicious of the press and their intentions as far as he's concerned we have a fellow like that who I cover in the summertime with the St. Louis Cardinals George Henry first down and it's it's too bad because a player a player like Dickey can do here we'll take a look at the Washington 21 to 10 over Dallas Heisman to Art Monk for a 43 yard pass they have five minutes left in the third quarter in that one I was going to say a player as great as Dickey could do so much for himself by figuring out somehow to have a relationship with the press and become a little bit more well-known. Problem with the staff again. That's the second time that's happened in this period. And it'll cost the Colts. They may be trying to change their cadence a little bit. Teams get into a pattern. Teams get into a pattern of doing things on the first snap or the first hut, they call it. So they try to alter that cadence a little bit, whether they go on the third hut. It's hut, hut, hut. They change it around, and sometimes it fools the quarterback himself, and if he's not used to doing it a lot. 
New England leading the Rams. And San Diego leading Kansas City. Hagel's in trouble and he goes down. His knee hit at the 39-yard line. That's the first sack for Denver today. That's their inspirational player right there, Tom Jackson. He's given, been given that award the last two years in a row here in Denver. He's the one that Louie Wright says is the most valuable player on that defensive unit. Randy Gratishar leads by his play and his performance on the field, whereas Jackson does that, but also has a, ten, has a way of firing up that defense. Second down, 21 from the 39-yard line. That's Curtis Dickey. And he gets a few back. Up to the 43-yard line where Busick 58 and Chavez 79 make the play. Dickey, the all-time leading rusher at Texas A&M. He's fifth as the all-time leading rusher in the Colts book. 2,731 yards coming into today's game and tack 46 on. He just need 80 yards to, needs 80 yards today to go over the 1,000-yard mark for this season. Clock running with 350 remaining in the third quarter. 19 to nothing, Baltimore. A surprising game here in Denver. over the middle to throw low as he was trying to get it into the middle to Tracy Porter. Radishar got a hand on it. Number 53. There's Randy. This is his last regular season game. He's retiring. Last regular season game at home, I should say, because, of course, next Sunday, the Broncos will play the Chiefs at Arrowhead Stadium. Thanks for 10 great years, Randy. He's a, probably the most popular player here in this Denver area. And they, they may try and talk him out of it next year for retiring. Into the end zone goes the punt from Ron Stark. And Denver will start from the 20-yard line. Stark boomed another one here. 57 yards. Three minutes, 24 seconds left in the third quarter. Baltimore 19, Denver nothing. When you run a small business, problems can leave you groping in the dark. You couldn't sleep either, huh? Unless you have a reliable guide like the Texas Instruments Professional Computer. It's easy to use keyboard, sharp, clear graphics, and hundreds of software programs will give you fast, reliable solutions today and tomorrow. Mike, I've got it. The Texas Instruments Professional Computer for reliable solutions today and tomorrow. This is Thunderbird's optional articulated seat. It adjusts to the driver's thighs, the position of the hips, the angle of the back. It even has a fully adjustable lumbar support. This seat improves the way you feel behind the wheel. And the way you feel in Thunderbird improves the way it drives. Have you driven the best-built American cars? Have you driven a Ford lately? Well, this is the way our Christmas card would look if we sent one out. Family portrait, but uh, oh, this is a surprising show by the Colts today. Oh, it is. I think that Denver, even at this stage of the game, is still shell-shocked, Jay. They can't believe what's happening to them, and they're just trying to get uncorked here and get something going. First and ten from the 20-yard line. the near sideline complete a fine catch is made by Watson well that's what they're going to have to do they've you know, said it once but they're going to have to go to Steve Watson as much as they can this afternoon they're running out of time what he's trying to do here that little look back he's trying to make the defensive back Burroughs number 45 think that he's going up as soon as Burroughs turned turned his feet inside Watson broke out picked up the first down 19 to nothing. Three touchdowns. Not out of the realm of possibility for these Broncos if they get hot. Elway going long, and it is incomplete. Sampson was down there, but he was double teamed. Burroughs, the man that batted the ball away from him. 
Also, Nesby Glasgow was back there, the free safety. He was playing center field and on the run. Actually, it was an excellent attempt by Sampson, as we'll see here. Penalty marker down. To go up and, and make attempt at getting the ball. Comes back at it here and, and jumps well. Almost catches it. He's about four feet off the ground there. Oh, they step off a penalty now against Baltimore. Let's listen to referee Fred Silva. Defense, illegal contact, number 35, first down. Tate Randall, the second-year man at cornerback, called for the infraction. He was at Miami in 82 with the Oilers the first three games of this season. Came over, took over. Of course, they let Derek Hatchett go. Elway's 11 of 22. First and 10 at the 44. throws and it's complete at McNoe out of bounds the catch was made at midfield by Watson but the official right on the line Bob Beeks the line judge ruled out of bounds too bad he can't doesn't have a chance to get his feet down here he does a, what all receivers should do when a quarterback's in trouble Steve broke off his route and came back to the quarterback and almost allowed him to get the completion and one foot was out of bounds Good call. Second down and 10. Two minutes, 26 seconds left to play in the third quarter. The Colts got three in the first, 13 in the second, have three here in the third to lead it 19 to nothing. Out of the shotgun, John Elway. Elway throws. It is complete. And a very fine play by Will Height. Will Hyde dropped the ball earlier in this second half, but the young fella from San Jose State made a big play there. Bracelet on the tackle, but a fine effort by Will Hyde. The ball underthrown, he made the catch and then scrambled for the first down. He comes from a wing position, puts on a good cut here to get rid of Greg Bracelet. Bracelet falls down, number 52. Will Hyde more than makes up for the drop earlier in the game and picks up the first down. First and 10 at the 42-yard line. One minute, 45 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Broncos trying desperately to get on the board here. Elway has time. Better hurry now. On the run. Penalty marker down. And the catch made by Watson, but again, he was out of bounds. Now a penalty marker is down back upfield. Elway had a lot of time. Then all of a sudden, one of the Colts closed on him from behind. We'll see what the call is. That is Bob Beeks on the right. And it's against Baltimore. Things starting to go the Broncos' way. A minute and a half to play in the third quarter. Steve Watson made another excellent catch there. You know, and I'm not so sure he was out of bounds. We'll listen to the call here. Defense number 52. The illegal hands to the face. Five yards. First down. First take, down. The call went against Greg Bracelet. Take a look at it there. You know, that is as close as you can be to being inbounds. It was an excellent attempt on his part to stay in. Wisniewski out of the game with an injured shoulder, we understand, for the Colts. Quentin Ballard in there. First and 10 at the 37. Elway throws. And a marvelous catch. Oh, what a beautiful catch by Steve Watson. First down at the 12-yard line. Odom and Randall were there. Uh-oh, penalty marker down back up field. And it's in the area where we might get a holding call against Denver. Well, we're going to show you a really marvelous effort by Watson, but they'll be bringing it back. Offense number 70, holding. Dave Stutter, the left tackle. Former Baltimore Colt, charged with holding. There's Stutter, played at Texas in his fifth year, a free agent. Now it'll be first and 20, back at the 47. A minute and 21 left to go in the third quarter. 19 to nothing, Baltimore. And a little shot.
shovel in underneath to Miles. Penalty marker down as Miles got all the way down to the 23-yard line. But we've got a penalty marker back upfield, and it's going to be holding against Denver. Saw John Elway look to the sidelines to his coach, Dan Reeves, and say, well, we're going back again. Offense, number 60. Well-designed play right here. It's a great call. You can only have the win taken out of you so many times. In Denver, it keeps happening to them. They've got to keep coming back. Try and get something on the board here as soon as possible. The ball is back at the 43-yard line, and they're facing first down and 30. Now, you try not to get it all back in one play, I wouldn't think, but Elway is going to the shotgun. You just try to see if you couldn't pick it up in, in three plays. Over the middle, Elway complete. And at the 40-yard line, they got a big chunk back. Zach Thomas, the rookie, makes his ninth catch of the season, and it's a big one. Tackle made by Tate Randall, number 35. Elway had a little bit more time to throw there because Baltimore is dropping more people back into their pass coverage and only rushing with three or sometimes four defensive linemen. They dropped all their linebackers back, which makes it tougher to throw downfield, but at least it gives Elway the time to throw. 19 to nothing, the Colts lead. 35 seconds left in the third quarter. Again out of the shotgun, second and 13. Catch made by Miles as Elway was able to beat the blitz. The Colts are saying that one of the Broncos was offside. Miles, you see the receptions for him in 83. He got down to the 36-yard line. Let's, no, they're going to place it at the 34-yard line. So they're going to face third and seven. Well, Baltimore brought everybody that time. They brought all their three linebackers and the four defensive front men. Elway reads it. He saw the blitz coming, dumps it off as quick as he can. It's an excellent play on his part. Well, that's the end of the third quarter. The score is the Baltimore Colts 19, the Denver Broncos nothing. And we'll be right back to Mile High Stadium in Denver, Colorado, after this message from your local station. Thursday, moves are being made. Diane's friend wants me. Cheers starts a half hour earlier. Sam, I want you, and I don't care who knows it. Gets the accident line. Eight cents on nothing. And following cheers, Buffalo Bill rides again. Oh, Eddie, come on. Get up. Act like a man. Daphne Coleman is Buffalo Bill Thursday. Now that's a hot line. In 1859, before Colorado was a state, people depended on the territory's first newspaper. That newspaper was the Rocky Mountain News. Today, the news is still Denver's number one newspaper and Denver's only paper among the top 20 newspapers in the nation in circulation. The news you need every day is yours every morning with Colorado's number one newspaper, the Rocky Mountain News. Tom Sheen. Yes. You claim to undersell most retail jewelers. We do. And you claim it's frequently at least by 40%. It usually is. Well, tell me, how do you do that? One way is by buying the way I do. You see, I'm constantly traveling all over the world to buy the gems at the source, right at the marketplace. So, what you save by eliminating the middleman, I pass on to the customer. Now, you have a friend in the diamond business. You're watching Channel 4, the Bronco Station. Baltimore 19, Denver nothing. We go to the fourth quarter. Denver facing third and seven from the 34-yard line. Sampson to the right side, Watson to the left. John Elway calling signals, shotgun formation. fumbles. Baltimore picks it up. Nesby Glasgow. And that ends an opportunity. Maybe. There is a penalty marker way downfield. And it looks like it might go against the Colts. Penalty against Baltimore. This is a big break. Elway 
limping off. Elway was in a pack of trouble here, Bob. This is what they've done so successfully this afternoon is put that, this kind of pressure on Elway. Let's listen to the call here. Illegal contact. Number 34. against Delaney. The new quarterback is Gary Kubiak. The rookie, eighth round draft choice, Texas A&M. He's 10 of 18, 165 yards, thrown a touchdown, thrown an interception. Steve DeBerg, of course, is injured, so it is the Aggie, Kubiak. You talk about being cold. He hasn't thrown a ball for over 20, 30 minutes here, has not picked up a ball, didn't get a chance to warm up here. Well, he throws and overthrows his intended receiver, Nathan Poole. I think we'll see John Elway come back in here. Right now, let's go to New York. An update, NFL 83. Thank you, Jay. In Anaheim, here goes Mosey Tatupu for the Patriots. Coming into today, he had one touchdown. For the year, this is his third touchdown for the day. 21-7, Patriots over the Rams. Back to Denver. Here in Denver, it is 19 to nothing. Baltimore, second down and 10. Denver at the 28-yard line with Kubiak now at quarterback and out of the shotgun. And he runs what looked like a design play, a quarterback draw from the shotgun. I think that's probably why they kept Kubiak in there for that second play rather than bring Elway back. They wanted to try that quarterback draw to see what they could do with it. Kubiak comes out, Elway comes back to mixed reviews at this point from this big crowd of better than 75,000. And it is third down and six from the 24. He twisted his knee a little bit on when he was sacked, but it appeared they checked it out on the sidelines, and I think everything's okay. Elway throwing and incomplete. Pass a little short. Intended over at the 19-yard line for number 39, Jesse Miles. Now they face fourth and six. Well, it's almost at the stage here, Jay, where they have to go for it. They've got to try and three points isn't going to help them too much here. Three touchdowns puts them in the lead in this game. So even with fourth and six, rather than pick up the three, they've got to go for the touchdown. Wide to the right. Out of the shotgun. Elway throwing and incomplete, almost intercepted. Greg Braceland, number 52, had his hands on it. I don't know who Elway was trying to go to, but there was not a Bronco in the vicinity. And John's upset. And we'll take a timeout. 13.54 remaining to be played. 19 to nothing. Baltimore leads Denver. You don't have to wait, Mom. You can go home. Peter, you're the first person in this family that's gone off to college. I can wait. When the Travelers insures a father's life, it's really his children's future we're insuring. So if anything happens to him, his dreams won't also die. There are more prominent people the Travelers insures, but none more important. to it than other beers, I think Pabst is good beer. Pabst is the place, your good friends all around you, for the real taste of beer, and all the good times you have here. No, it's always going to taste good. That's what counts. For the real taste of beer, Pabst is the place. 
Thursday, spend a family Christmas in Washington with Andy Williams, Leslie Uggams, and the nation's most spectacular choirs, Thursday at 8, 7 Central and Mountain. Houston, a winner over Cleveland today. San Francisco defeated Buffalo. Some more finals for you. Chicago over Minnesota. Cincinnati defeated Detroit. Seattle over the Giants. And New Orleans defeated Philadelphia in overtime. First and 10 from the 24-yard line for the Colts. Hagel handing it off. And that's McMillan, and there's nothing there for him. Let's go to New York now and check in again with NFL 83. Thank you, Jay Randolph. In San Diego, late third quarter, Ed Luther at quarterback. Dan Fouts has been hurt again. Look how wide open Wes Chandler is for the touchdown. It's 38 to 24, San Diego. Good move by Chandler. Let's go back to Denver. Well, I'm working with a Chandler here. Wes Chandler's a dandy, isn't he? So were you, Bob Chandler. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> Second down and nine at the 25. pitching it back to Dickey. Dickey to the outside. Penalty markers are down. Dickey steps out of bounds up at the 34-yard line. Stops the clock with 13.08 to play. The indication is that the call will go against the Colts. Holding. Kubiak now loosening up on the sidelines. We saw him in the game just for a few moments. Now they checked Elway's knee out, but we might see him. Offense holding. Washington 21 to 10 over Dallas in the fourth quarter. Look at New England now, leading it 21 to 7 over the Rams in the fourth quarter. And that update we got just moments ago, that San Diego score, 38-24. Here it is 19 to nothing. That was St. Louis 34-24 over the Raiders, Jim. Yep. Number 53, Gratishar, was coming. And he forced one of the Colts to make a move before the ball was snapped. In fact, you know, it almost could have been the other way around. He may not have ball been coming. Ball start. Quarterback number 18. He may, he may not have been coming, but he saw the quarterback make a little move away from the center, Pagel, and came. A veteran player. He'll do that. He knows what's happening out on the field at all times. Colts don't have a turnover. They have the lead, 19 to nothing. They're nearing the 13-minute mark left to play as the shadows begin to engulf Mile High Stadium in the city of Denver. Dickey brought down at the 12-yard line. Fine play by Jim Ryan. Ryan, the free agent linebacker on the left side from William & Mary. There he is, number 50. Second year as a starter. Well, it'll be third down and 21 from the 13-yard line. 12 minutes and 40 seconds left to play. 19 to nothing, Baltimore. Pagel, he's had a very fine day. See if he's going to put it up here on third and long. Rolling out. Comes back and goes down. Fumble. And the ball belongs to Baltimore. They've blown the play dead before the ball squirted out. Arnie Chavis on the tackle, so the Colts will have to punt with 12 minutes remaining in this game. And Pagel gets up very slowly. Like we said, they couldn't have a better guy punting for him down deep in these kind of situations than Ron Stark. So far, his average today, and he's vying for the lead in the National Football League. Today, he's averaging 50.5 yards on all his kicks. There's his average. Thomas is downfield. Thomas, fair catch at the 46-yard line. 
One of the reasons he probably far, fair caught that ball was Denver went after the block. When they go after the block, you don't have a lot of men downfield to help block for the receiver, Zach Thomas. 19 to nothing. Baltimore leads Denver. 11.25 left to play in regulation time. Your Chevy dealer's big USA One year-end sales drive is on. They're out to sell 250,000 cars and trucks by year's end. With so many to sell, it's dealing time. There's another reason to see your Chevy dealer. You can save up to $375 on a specially equipped Cavalier Type 10 or $330 on a new celebrity. And for the first time ever from Chevrolet, take retail delivery now on any of these selected models only and make no monthly payment until March 1st with GMAC Finance. See your Chevy dealer now. You know, this Christmas, give your family a gift that keeps on giving. An RCA video disc player and video discs. The RCA video disc player gives everyone in your family the gift of great entertainment. More than a thousand great shows to watch all year long. All on one of the simplest, most inexpensive video systems you can buy. And you know what? If you buy a player for Christmas, RCA will give you a $50 Christmas bonus. $50 back on the gift that gives over and over and over. Today's game is brought to you by Chevrolet, the official U.S. cars and trucks of the 14th Winter Game. Chevrolet and you taking charge. By Anheuser-Busch St. Louis, the Brewers of Michelob. Some things speak for themselves. And by a tool for modern times, the IBM Personal Computer. Inside the 12-minute mark, 11.25 to play. Bob Chandler and Jay Randolph with you from Mile High Stadium in Denver, where Baltimore leads 19 to nothing. Denver knows it's now or never. They've taken out their tight end, Agloff. They put in Zach Thomas. They put in Gerald Wilhite, another fine receiver out of the backfield. Potentially five receivers going downfield. And this ball is batted down. They were trying to get it to number 84, Sampson. As the Colts know what's going on, too, Bob, they have the prevent defense out there. John really never gets back quite far enough here. Even though it's a deep drop, he's only back about five yards. The normal deep drop takes a quarterback seven yards, and then if he has to, he steps forward. That was Steve Parker, the rookie free agent. Parker getting his mitts on it. Second down and ten. at the 35 down to the 30 still going and down to the 22 yard line Tim Anderson one of the extra defensive backs made the tackle well, Mr. Chandler that was a very interesting call right there this is an excellent call they fake the do a little counter fake the sweep to the right Elway comes out on a naked roll and hits Miles with just a short little dump pass. He does the rest on his own. It's important here for all the Denver players as they catch the ball and they're moving downfield to try and get out of bounds now and start conserving the time. First and 10 at the 21-yard line. Going wide to the right is Watson. Elway throwing and incomplete. Zach Thomas, the intended receiver, and he had a catchable ball there, but couldn't come up with it. The coverage by Glasgow. Washington now leading 28 to 10 as John Riggins has scored his second touchdown of the day. And they have 11 minutes left in the fourth quarter. And the Redskins in that big game to get the home field advantage are looking good. Elway, 15 of 30, 217 yards. He's been sacked four times. He's facing second down and 10 at the 21. hit just as he threw the pass couldn't get anything on it Boy, these Colts have done a job today on defense well, they've had four sacks as you just mentioned Jay and you know coming into this game they had only two sacks in their last three games so they've really come on strong today they're playing that kind of pressure defense and attacking the pocket that they needed to do to be effective against Elway and the Broncos this afternoon and now Denver faces third down and 10. So often today, when it's looked like they've been able to go and move, they have been stalled on a situation just like this. Watson going.
going in motion. Elway throwing and touchdown. Waiting for the call. Yes, there it is. The officials wanted to check along the sideline. Clint Sampson, touchdown, and the shutout is over. It's a corner route by Sampson. That means he takes it to the post and then back out to the corner of the end zone. Elway gets the time, lays it out in the corner, and what we see here is a young receiver that just puts on the afterburners and gets to the ball, gets both feet down. Well, we'll have to take a look at that again. I'd like to look at that again. I really would. The point after by Rich Carlos is good, and it is 19 to 7 as pressure performs. Let's look again. Is it a touchdown or isn't it? Sampson makes the catch. Looks Look like, like one he had foot one to me. Foot in, Bob. <laughs> but the score is on the board. Blazer is out ahead of the imports with Instatrack, the revolutionary system that lets you shift from freewheeling two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive high and back at any speed. And Chevy S10 Blazer beats Bronco 2 with two-wheel drive they don't offer, a four-cylinder engine they don't have, and mileage they can't touch. Chevy S10 Blazer. And now, take delivery of any new Blazer and make no monthly payments till March 1st. Come celebrate the new year. First, the Fiesta Bowl, followed by the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl. Then Heisman Trophy winner Mike Rozier leads top-ranked Nebraska in a game that will decide the national championship. All January 2nd on NBC Sports. Here's Sampson again, and watch when the ball hits his hands. The one foot down is in, and the next foot is out. But the score is on the board. He's not going to give it back, Jake. 19 to 7. Porter is back deep to receive the kick from Carlos. Porter at the 5, at the 10. And he falls down at the 13-yard line. Well, the folks here are fired up. There's still a lifetime to play, 10-44. Both teams have three timeouts remaining. The folks here will begin to implore the defense to get that football back. Well, I'd love to say this for our producer, Ron Kershaw. It's not over yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think the folks in Baltimore know it's not over yet. Listen to this crowd. at the top of the show. You played here. A Fago can't call the signals with this situation. No, and it really, it, it wouldn't be smart if he got up there and tried to. The officials will try and coax him into doing so because they don't want them to de delay the game continually. But he really, if he can't hear, and his outside receivers and linemen can't hear, he should step back. That's his responsibility, and that's his prerogative in this kind of a situation. 75,000 plus sold out top of the play here. There's not a bad seat in the house, and when they start rolling, boy, it's something. Now the Broncos are asking for quiet. First and ten from the 13-yard line. Fred Silva's going to make an announcement, I think. He's going to come over and indicate. And 
the public address announcer makes the announcement here. They make the announcement and we get a bigger roar than we had before. Well, I think it's going to be pretty tough to quiet this crowd down. Now Dan Reeves has stepped out onto the field and he is asking for quiet. Coach Reeves is asking for quiet. But I'm not sure very many are buying it here. Well, they can eventually assess a penalty on Denver right. for delay a game if the fans don't at least cooperate to a certain extent, at least to give Pagel enough silence so he can hear what's happening out there. All right, they'll try again. First and 10 from the 13. Pagel hands it off, and that is Curtis Dickey. And Dickey gets out to the 19-yard line. Stop made by Louis Wright, number 20. Barney Chavis also in there on the tackle. Gain of about five on the play. Ten minutes and 20 seconds remaining in this game. 19 to 7, Baltimore. it off to Dickey and he is stopped short of a first down he gets to about the 23 yard line in underneath the pile Radishar also Rulon Jones well, we've seen such great effort by Dickey today we can't count the number of tackles that he's broken great individual effort all afternoon I said he was short of the first down. I may have spoken a bit too soon. Let's see. They're going to measure. It's a first down. And now they start chanting defense, defense. That's a big first down as we're inside the 10-minute mark. First and 10 from the 24-yard line now. The clock running with 9.50 left to go. Standing up, sitting down in unison around the stadium. There you can get an idea. This crowd trying to get something going for their Broncos. And the Colts leading 19 to 7. A busted play. Hagel goes down. It looked like almost that Mike Pagel was wrong on that. Both his backs were moving in toward the right side. They looked at each other, wondered what happened, what the miscue was. We'll see it here. Both of them start to the right. Pagel has nobody to hand the ball to. Whether it was a play action pass or not, I, I feel more like that he just turned the wrong way and the miscue was with Mike Pagel. Radishar and Jackson made the tackle. Second down. 24. Dickey needs 21 yards for 1,000 on the year. Pagel on the run. And down he goes. Tempers flare. This crowd on its feet. Coming in to make the play was Tom Jackson. We've talked about the inspirational player that he is. The Broncos getting their second sack. The clock running now with eight. 45 to play. Tom Jackson not only making the play, but tries to do a little intimidating to the Baltimore players. Steve Wright didn't buy it, came back, and that's when they exchanged a few punches there right after the play. But an excellent play by Tom Jackson sacking Mike Pagel. Third down and 20. Back at the 14. Penalty marker down. Pagel on the run. Pagel out across the 25, short of a first down. As we indicated, there is a marker down. Referee Fred Silva and his crew will discuss it. Clock shows eight minutes and 17 seconds remaining. against 
against Denver. And this will bring it all the way out to the 40-yard line. Defense, defense number 79, personal foul, head slap, push down. Bob, it is 19 to 7. They're not far away from Raul Alegre's range. A field goal would mean that two touchdowns could not win it. Very much changed the complexion of this game. The Colts with first and 10 now out at the 40. Hagel and these Colts have hung in here all afternoon. Curtis Dickey. To the 43 yard line. Clock running down to eight minutes left in regulation time. The ends, Shaba 79 and Jones 75 on the tackle. Mike Pago and the Colts taking a lot of time off the 30 second clock on every play as you see 745 remaining. This clock run down to eight, seven, five, four, three. Ooh, what a hit. Oh, my. Randy McMillan was shocked by Tommy Jackson. Jackson, number 57, met him head on. Jackson, out of Louisville. His 11th season here, he has made some plays over the years. Well, we'll watch him shoot the gap right there. Hit McMillan before he could ever get ahead of steam going. Puts him down behind the line of scrimmage. That's the kind of plays they need here from Jackson. It keeps everybody fired up, and they want to keep this level of intensity if they can get back into this ballgame. Third down and seven at the 43. 6.50 left to play in regulation time. Hagel throwing down. He's one of the great ones. They have stayed away from him most of the afternoon. They decided to try him that time, and he comes up with an interception. This is Victor Otis. He can fly, but they forget Lewis Wright can also run with the best of them. Comes up with the interception. They have stayed away from him, like as I said, most of the afternoon. He almost breaks this one here. Brings it back and puts Denver in good field position. 17th career interception. Elway out of the shotgun. Elway throwing. And almost intercepted. And I'll tell you, John Sawyer, the veteran, did one heck of a job of dislodging that ball from Maxwell, the linebacker over there. Elway tried to force that ball in there. And it was a very tough situation. They almost gave it right back. Well, Denver came with everybody on that interception. Pagel tried to get rid of it as quick as he could, set it up there for Otis to run under, but instead, Louis Wright ran under it. Elway almost gave it back a moment ago. Second and 10 at the 43. Over the middle, complete at the 32-yard line. Catch made by Zach Thomas, the rookie. Tackle by Nesby Glasgow. We got to see him going to Steve Watson on that particular play. Although he hit Zach Thomas, picked up the needed yardage. Watson was wide open on a corner route. They're covering him short and deep, but he's experienced as he is. He, he ran in between them and was wide open on, open on the corner. Six minutes to play in the game. First and ten at the 32-yard line. Little draw. It goes to Wilhite. He's at the 25. Inside the 25-yard line. Kim Anderson, number 26, coming up to make the play. Washington, 31 to 10 in the fourth quarter over the Dallas Cowboys. Big day for Joe Theismann, John Riggins, and company. Although they 
although they can't afford the time, it's not a bad idea to keep the ball on the ground occasionally. You have to keep those linebackers honest. If you let them just drop back into those passing zones, it's very difficult to complete anything downfield. Elway in the shotgun, second and two at the 24. Elway pops down on it, comes away with it on the run. Elway gets out of bounds. Well, that's a fine play. He was in deep trouble. Came up with the ball and to stop the clock with 5.03 remaining. Johnny Cooks was the man in pursuit. Elway showed he can hoof it pretty good. He did the second best thing he could there, which is get out of bounds and stop the clock. The other thing that he didn't do here that's a real plus is he didn't just throw the ball up in the air for grabs. He knows he can't afford an interception now, so he got out of bounds, stopped the clock, have a chance to regroup a little bit. Third down and four at the 26-yard line. Sampson goes to the right side. Watson to the left. Miles, the single setback, back there with John Elway in the shotgun. They're coming. They throw it out to Miles, wide open. 20, 10, 5, touchdown! was a great catch and then a dandy run by Miles the rookie out of LSU that's his first touchdown I believe of the season great block by Bill Bryan the center and this one is far from over Prestridge will hold Carlos to attempt the point minutes and 54 seconds left in regulation time. Mile High Stadium, Denver, Colorado. Baltimore, 19. The Denver Broncos, 14. We'll be back in a moment. Your Chevy dealer's big USA One year-end sales drive is on. They're out to sell 250,000 cars and trucks by year's end. With so many to sell, it's dealing time. And to make it easy to buy now, here's a first-time offer from Chevrolet. Take retail delivery now and make no monthly payments until March 1st with GMAC financing. When you buy a new Chevette or Citation 2 or any new Blazer, Pickup, Suburban, or El Camino, see your Chevy dealer now. I can't believe we're bidding a job this big. They wanted somebody new. Running your own business, you've got to give it your best. And that means personal computers from digital. For extensive business software, graphics, communications, and a revolutionary customer support plan. Not even the world's largest computer company gives you so much. We got it. But the second largest does. Digital Equipment Corporation. Come celebrate the new year. First, the Fiesta Bowl, followed by the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl. Then Heisman Trophy winner Mike Rozier leads top-ranked Nebraska in a game that will decide the national championship. All January 2nd on NBC Sports. Let's take a look at that touchdown again. A little dump pass out in the right flat to Jesse Miles. What really makes it work is a great block downfield by the center, Bill Bryant. Short kick, hitting at the 10, picked up by Anderson. Boom, as he hit. Oh, look at this. Ken Woodward, number 52, led the way. Everybody's standing here at Mile High Stadium. Four minutes and 45 seconds left. The Colts, who a short time ago were leading 19 to nothing, are now up by only it took them a long time, but Denver has finally found the intensity that they needed from the beginning of this game. They're hoping that it didn't take them too long, and they still have time to get one more score on the board. First and ten from the 12-yard line for Baltimore. The handoff going. Up the near sideline. It's 
Curtis Dickey. And he quieted the crowd as he ran it all the way to the 40-yard line. Dickey getting outside, showing that excellent speed, and that may have put him over the 1,000 mark. You just can't say enough about this, this man's performance today. Every time they've needed him, he's come through, which he does again right here. And as you said, Jay, I think he's, that put him over the 1,000-yard mark for this season. Dickey going out now to the far side. A ball out at the 40-yard line, first down. Penalty marker goes down. That was Alvin Moore who replaced Dickey. Tackle made by Tom Jackson. Clock shows four minutes, 34 seconds remaining to be played. Illegal procedure against the Baltimore Colts. Both the Colts and the Broncos have three timeouts remaining. Offense, ball start, right guard, first down. Ball went against Ben Utt. 1,012 yards for Dickey. Frank Cush, the Colts head coach. He's seen this Denver club come back. First and 15 now at the 35. Alvin Moore gets near the 40-yard line. He was wrapped up by Gratishar and number 58, Steve Busick. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is Colorado's News Channel, Channel 4, KCNC, Denver. Jay Randolph and Bob Chandler here at Mile High Stadium in Denver. The Broncos trying to pull it out. Colts trying to hold on, second and 11. And what a remarkable individual effort it was. You, you could see it coming from the line of scrimmage, Jay. Tom Jackson is lined up on the weak side. That means he's away from the tight end and he's uncovered. As soon as the ball was snapped, he was heading toward Dickey. Caught him from behind, enabled him to keep him. We'll see it here. You'll see Jackson come in from the right side of your screen, full speed. Gets Dickey before he can break through the hole. Here's a very big play, third down and 10 from the 40. Three minutes, 10 seconds to play in regulation time. Down the sidelines, and it is dropped! Dropped by Porter. Bob, if we can look at this again, Lewis Wright had the coverage, but Porter did an excellent job. I thought he might have been called for offensive pass interference down the sideline. He bumped his man, got a jump on him, and had a chance to make a big play. Hagel threw an excellent ball. Porter had him beat. Louis trying to catch up here. And actually does, he, Louis played a part in Porter dropping that ball. He stripped his left hand from him just as he went to make the catch. Excellent recovery by Louis Wright, who was actually beat pretty well on the play. Ron Stark will do the punting. Zach Thomas is downfield. For the far sideline, not a very good kick. It went out of bounds at the 25. Three minutes exactly left to play in regulation time. We'll take a timeout. Baltimore leads Denver 19 to 14. This is the automobile you probably didn't expect from Mercedes-Benz. On the test track, it moves comfortably at more than 100 miles an hour. Its unique rear suspension provides extraordinary handling. Its quick reflexes exemplify legendary Mercedes-Benz engineering. More than just a new automobile, it is a new class of automobile. The new Mercedes-Benz 190 class.
clean, fresh taste of the Rockies, 12 at a time, from Coors, all the way to you. The best of the Rockies is yours. The Broncos have the football. They'll operate from their own 25-yard line. Three minutes remaining. They have all three timeouts left. Baltimore leads 19 to 14. Egloff is back in at tight end number 85. Will Height and Miles in the backfield with John Elway. He operates from the shotgun. And they give it off to Will Height. He's in all kinds of trouble. Now he may get out of it. Well, he got a couple. Penalty marker down. What they're going to call there, Jay, I think, is Steve Watson, crack back block. I think he got him in the back. That's the call. A push in the back. Watson on the crack back. Now Zach Thomas is coming in, bringing in a play to Elway. Tom Glassick comes in. Egloff comes back out. Offense number 81. Illegal block Excellent. above the waist. Nice job the by our crew, director Bob Levy and this great camera crew working here today, and our producer Ron Kershaw. All that has to happen there is Watson's head has to be in front of, of the defensive man, and it, it wasn't quite in the position it should have been. He gets the clip called on him. Loss is back to the 16. Elway throws quickly out into the flat to Will Height. Will Height gets out of bounds, stopping the clock. Didn't get much, just over the 20-yard line. Two minutes and 44 seconds remaining to be played. Bishop and Glassick are rotating, bringing in the plays. Glassick comes out. It's going to be second down, 14. Thanks to our spotters, Al King and Ron Talpers. Ray Friedman working our stats. Tom Murray and Bob Rose, our scorekeepers. Elway, 19 of 36. Elway's got a lot of time. He throws, complete. First down at the 39-yard line. On the far sideline, the catch made by Watson. Watson really covered up around that ball, didn't he? Look like... He just wrapped himself around it. Clock is running with 2.20 left. There's a lot of great receivers in this league, but there are none finer than that man right there, number 81, Steve Watson. Burroughs made the tackle over there. Trying to get one play away before the two-minute mark. Elway steps up and throws, and he was hit just as he got it away. Looked like he was trying to get it to Zach Thomas. And we're going to get the two-minute warning here, I believe. The clock shows 2.01. Here's Watson isolated on that big catch a moment ago. He's going to release inside, which he does, then breaks it out. The little stutter step there just freezes the defensive back for a moment. Elway finds him. And what Steve is paramount on his, most on his mind right then is just, like you said, Jay, protecting the ball. Well, they're going to be able to get one play away before the two-minute warning. Second and 10 at the 39-yard line. Elway straight back, now on the run, comes out. And out of bounds near midfield. The gain is down to the Colts, 47-yard line. Maxwell, the linebacker, ran Elway out. Boy, the big guy can move, can he? Elway, 6-3, about 205. The two-minute warning here at Mile High Stadium in Denver. Now, here comes another one of those fantastic finishes. Alcoa presents fantastic finishes. 1981, quarterback Richard Todd, his injured ribs ache, has just trailed the Dolphins with time for one more drive. He hits Jerome Barkham. He nails Lamb Jones. Todd is hot and Don Shula knows it. Less than 20 seconds left. 
Bingo, the game winner to Barton. Todd completes passes to seven different receivers, and the Jets win 16 to 50. The recyclable aluminum can is a product of the same Alcoa research and development that produced exotic new aerospace alloys, engineered satellite receivers for your roof, ceramic substrates for advanced computers, and high-strength aluminum for a new generation of cars and planes. And soon, a new recyclable can to protect your food as well as your beverages. Fifty-four remaining in regulation time. 19 to 14 Baltimore. Elway's carried the ball three times for 23 yards. He's 20 out of 38. 298 yards. We talked at the top of the show about Chandler, about Denver being very much in the playoff picture. A loss today would be tough for them. They'd still be in the picture, but a win if they could pull it out would take them a giant step. First and 10 at the 47 yard line. Elway back in the shotgun. The Colts are coming. Elway rolling. He throws. And it is almost intercepted at the 20 yard line. A great effort over there by Jeff Delaney, number 34, to almost come away with that ball. Elway threw that ball about 45 yards on the dead run, going the wrong way. Sometimes a guy that's as gifted as John Elway will rely a little too much on his physical talents. Not many people in that situation would have tried to throw a ball 60 yards running full speed in the opposite direction, which is tough to do. That's what John tried to do there. Almost ended up with an interception. Second down and 10. One minute and 47 seconds remaining. There's the timeout situation. and 31 seconds left to play. That will leave Denver with two timeouts remaining as John Elway, the young Californian, comes over. That defensive unit has played their hearts out today. We think, talked about the altitude early in the program. Well, I think that picture describes everything that we said about the altitude. It takes its toll here after a game like that defense has played this afternoon. One of your old bosses, used to bring his team in here under the cover of darkness because he always told me, he said, if you get in late and you play without too much of a problem, you can get them out of town before they realize about the altitude. There's a final. The Redskins defeat Dallas handily today, 31-10. to 10. Well, they've said, they've said that before. There's New England over the Rams, 21-7. And look at this, 38-38, Kansas City, San Diego, fourth quarter. St. Louis pulled it out against the Raiders. This is Elway's first 300-yard game. He has 311 yards. He has a minute and 31 seconds. Baltimore up by five. the 35 yard line first and 10 for Denver wide to the right goes Watson Sampson comes to the left side Elway steps up throws it's complete and headed for out of bounds is Thomas and he didn't get there Thomas did not get to the out of bounds marker before Nesby Glasgow made the stop Fine play by Glasgow. The clock is running. 1-10 to go. Excellent play by Glasgow, keeping him in bounds. He recovered very well after Zach Thomas makes the catch. Kept him in bounds, which is a real plus for Baltimore down here. One minute to play. Elway throws it away to stop the clock. 56 seconds. The ball at the 27-yard line. Denver needs the touchdown. Bishop talking there with Elway.
It was 19 to nothing. Before the Broncos came up with two big scores here in the fourth period, Frank Cush looking out at his club. Third down, two at the 27. Broncos with two timeouts remaining. They fake a run. Elway throws. Drop! Oh, my. Jeff Miles tried to run with that football before he had it. He would have had the first down. 52 seconds remaining, and now Denver is down to one play. Fourth and two at the 27-yard line of Baltimore. The Colts, they have played their hearts out here today. Let it 19 to nothing. That man's club, Denver, calling a timeout now. Even though the clock had stopped, it's an important time coming up, of course. Fourth down, two, and they'll talk it over with John Elway. Again, I want to say thanks to our entire crew here in Denver. Bob, it's always exciting to come to this stadium and uh, see the action here. And the camera work headed up by Bob Levy and our producer, Ron Kershaw, has been excellent this afternoon. And we have 52 seconds left. As Denver tries to pull it out, Randy Gratishar's last regular season appearance here. And if they can pull it out, it will really set up the playoff possibilities for them. If they don't win it, it puts a real crimp in the situation. We'll take a look at Zach Thomas here again. It's proved to be a big play. He's doing everything he can to get open. Changes his direction three or four times, makes the catch, spins the right way, thinking the whole time he's got to get out of bounds, but Nesby Glasgow keeps him from doing that. Fourth down and two. Here we go. Are they going to run it here, Jay, or do you think they'll risk putting it up in the air? Well, let's see. Poole and Wilhite in the backfield. They're conventional. Elway, straight back, throws over the middle, wide open. Going with it is Will Height. Will Height to the five. Touchdown! Gutsy call by Dan Reeves. Will Height, a little swing over the middle. Make sure he catches the ball. That was most important to pick up the first down. Does the rest on his own. Watch the backflip. I don't know if we'll see it. He gets up. No, we don't see it, but he got up and did a backflip. It would definitely have been rated high by any diving judge. Here's a problem on the point after. And a penalty marker goes down. as they had a problem with a snap 44 seconds left some kind of comeback for these Denver Broncos now referee Silva and his entire crew are discussing this as we look again at the touchdown Great effort here by Will Help. Pass interference, number 25. We'll have a retry. We're going to get a retry on the extra point as there was pass interference. Now watch. Do we see? Ah, uh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell me he has a bad hamstring. I'll tell you. Here's the point after try again after they messed the first one up and tried to pass and had an interference call. It's good. Well, this one is not over. Baltimore has three timeouts left. Here it is again. From the high.
board. <laughs> 21 to 19. What a comeback by Denver. We've got a kicker on the other side of the field here who can hit from 60 yards probably in this stadium. They've got 44 seconds to try and get him in the range to do so. And I'll remind again, three timeouts. Elway is 23 out of 43. 338 yards, three touchdowns. And he'll be the toast of the town tonight if it stays this way. And so will a couple of unsung gentlemen named Miles and Will Height. Here's Will Height again. Neither started this ball game, Miles or Will Height, but both have contributed greatly to Denver getting back into it and taking the lead. 21 gigantic points for the Broncos here in the fourth quarter. Three timeouts left for the Colts. Carlos to kick off. Anderson and Williams back to receive. Anderson coming out. Well, he looked like he couldn't make up his mind, and then when he did, it was a little late. Indecision on the return. take a look at him here. He decides to come out, whether it's a good decision or not. That's hindsight. Trips over his own man, which is really what caused the poor return. Jay, there was only one guy on that field jumping higher than Will Hyde when he made that touchdown, and that was Dan Reeves. First and ten at the 13-yard line. Mike Pagel straight back. Pagel throwing and completing out to the 22-yard line. Short of a first down. The pass complete to Bernard Henry and the tackle made by Tom Jackson. It is short of the first down. A timeout stops the clock with 29 seconds remaining. Pagel over there with Zeke Berkowski. There are the timeouts left. He's trying to get the ball downfield. Everybody was fairly well covered. Hits Henry out in the flat. Henry tried to get back outside, but they didn't allow him to do so. Baltimore had three field goals and a touchdown. And then another field goal in the second half from Allegre. And then 21 unanswered points for the Broncos. 21-yard pass, Elway to Sampson, 26-yard pass to Miles, 26 yards, Elway to Wilhite. 29 seconds remaining to be played. Can the Colts get it in shape for Raul Alegre? Four field goals for him today. He doesn't look too worried about it over there. Second down and one. throwing and almost intercepted. The pass was intended for Otis and the coverage Jim Ryan, the linebacker. Box stop now with 24 seconds left to play. Third down coming up. Broncos trying to go to nine and six. The Colts, if they lose, it'll be six and nine. Oh, Pagel had Dickey. And if you could have gotten Dickey in the open field there at the 30-yard line, he might have made some magic. But he couldn't hold on as the pass was just a little too far in front of him. Now, just as moments ago, when Denver was down to their last play, it is fourth down and one for the Colts. Denver leading 21 to 19, 
coming back here in the fourth period. Houston over Cleveland. We'll show you some final scores, but first of all, let's watch this fourth down play. Hagel over the middle, completes it out at the 31 yard line for a first down. That was Porter, and it was Smith on the tackle. Now we have 14 seconds remaining. We'll take a look at it. Excellent catch by Tracy Porter to pick up the first down. Hagel fired it in there, didn't have much time. Surrounded by orange jerseys. Picks it up, and they're still alive. They need, realistically, about 20 yards for Allegre to really have a shot. They are down to one timeout left. The Colts have the ball at their own 33-yard line. They probably have two more pass attempts to try and pick up that 20 yards. There's a final. Houston over Cleveland. And here is the finals as we run through them very quickly for you. Recapping all the action. Seattle beat the Giants today. Seattle's playoff hopes very much alive. New Orleans with a victory in overtime. Washington did a job on Dallas. The Rams losers to New England. Cardinals defeated the Raiders. Cardinals still have a slim hope for the playoffs. yard line it was Henry the tackle by Foley and this one's not over yet six seconds left I tell you this is a great catch by Bernard Henry but he does one thing that I think he wish he could take back and that's after he makes the catch trying to get open he loses about five yards we'll see him do a little backtracking right there that five yards may prove to be very important here with just six seconds left well there's six seconds left as we look again at this play, the Colts are now out of timeouts. And there's a big decision to be made here. Being out of timeouts, you got to run some kind of route to get out of bounds to stop the clock if you don't go with a field goal right here. They're about, I don't, I'm not sure, Jay, around 60, 61 yards out. They've got to go for the field gonna goal. They're going to go. Here he comes, Raul Allegre. Four field goals today. 28 on the year, a new club record. Henry, eight catches, 169 yards. What a game he's had. This will be 65 yards, this attempted field goal. They're going to place it down back at the 45. that's overcome so many adversities this year really has a lot of momentum to get them into the playoffs. 